part of the world. So, hello everyone, my name is Anton Babenko, and the topic of my diploma work is hidden state refinement, both of low cost and Thank you a lot to my mentor, Roman Zansen, who generated a lot of ideas and hypotheses uh, for this work. Also, thank you to Armed Forces of Ukraine, who fight for our freedom, and this uh, work is dedicated to them. Uh, the plan of our presentation will be the next one. Uh, first of all, I will tell you about program statement, application scenario. Uh, I will tell you about related works in the background. Uh, then uh, I will tell you about quality metrics and loss functions. Uh, propose, show you proposed solution, hypothesis results, and after it, I will summarize those. So let's talk about problem statement. Uh, the research area of uh, this project is uh, optical flow forecasting. Uh, and uh, uh, while we find out uh, the reason why we should uh, study even this uh, hidden state refinement project, uh, we found out that uh, optical flow uh, has several bottlenecks. They are uh, they need a lot of computation power and uh, execution time for different update blocks. And uh, uh, actually, it's um, really essential when uh, we are uh, using such refinement systems. And also, it contains slow convergence due to complexity of this optical flow task. And uh, uh, these are all the main directions to follow, and actually, uh, we tried to solve it. Uh, so, optical flow estimation task is uh, quite the next one. Uh, we have uh, image pair and we try to allocate the pixels from the uh, first image to another one. Uh, so, we want just uh, to find the direction of such pixels. And uh, here you can see the uh, sort image of optical flow, it's just a result of this. Uh, the application area is quite uh, wide of the optical flow. It can be used in the video compressing, the video restoring. Uh, it can provide a lot of features for self-driving cars. Uh, it can provide depth estimation and also can be used in uh, different uh, applications of uh, um, image um, editing and whatever. So um, I divided, for my background work, I divided the uh, uh, flow models to three groups. Uh, they are early tests, so uh, it's just uh, CNN applications iterative when we uh, when the people added uh, uh, recurrent networks uh, there. And also, I will tell you about some optimization tools. So, the first one it's uh, neural based uh, optical flows. Uh, they are convolution neural systems, for example, they can be a flow net, flow net 2, PWC net, etc. And uh, there are pros of them. They have, a, of course, they have better metric results than their uh, classical algorithms, uh, for example, as Lucas Canal one. And uh, it contains also end to end training, which is quite well. But there are cons of it that it contains slow convergence. And uh, due to the slow convergence, you need uh, quite large data sets and a lot of data sets to um, train properly. Uh, after it, uh, people decided to use uh, rough like architectures. Uh, they added the iterative part to uh, add some kind of refinement, recognition, and handling of solutions. Um, it's done due to um, small steps uh, to refine the final optical flow results and uh, get uh, some small details uh, uh, from five to one hundred iterations. Um, and also, rough like architectures added the cost volume function which adds additional context to the image. It's just a uh, four-dimensional matrix. Uh, it's a correlation of two frames. And uh, uh, we can say that uh, um, we, can, uh, we can see there that one pixel, uh, potential movement of one pixel uh, from image one to image two. And also, it contains better matrix results than the previous iteration of uh, uh, optical flow models from the neural network ones. And there are also bit, uh, it's kind of slow iterative part due to the execution time and the iterative uh, number uh, is from five to 100 and uh, we want to solve it of course. And uh, uh, cost volume function is quite large of course it's uh, four dimensional it's, uh, and it's hard to proceed uh, with it. And also it contains slow convergence and but this uh, model is trying to solve. And uh, the next stage is uh, optical flow optimization techniques, for example, decay flow and S3. There are several pros of them. For example, as decay flow tries to stabilize the training and add additional convergence to the systems uh, due to um, optimization methods. And uh, 
for example, at, at three, tries to reduce the lack of the post-polio function. Uh, they use Hadron's neighbors uh, to um, select uh, proper features, for example, five from 100, and such five features will be described, for example, 80% of the whole post-polio function data. But uh, of course, there are points of it, uh, um, due to such uh, uh, feature reduction, they perform bonus results. And uh, according to the flow, they require casting logs uh, and uh, optimization techniques. Uh, and uh, that's why it's hard to port onto mobile phones and edge devices uh, such optimization techniques, but it's not our case. We are open to this. Uh, according to metrics and loss functions, so our main, main metric is kind of uh, average point error, uh, EBE. Here you can see the uh, formula of it. It's actually uh, estimated optical, it's a feeling distance between the uh, estimated optical flow and brown juice optical flow. And uh, there are several additional metrics for us. It's one pixel, three pixel, and five pixel average point error, uh, which means that um, the percentage of uh, endpoint error, which is less than one pixel, three pixel, and five pixel, respectively. Also, we, had, uh, we used uh, L1 loss and L2 loss. L1 loss is for uh, rough cell light architectures, and L2 loss for uh, low like uh, approaches. <coughs> Uh, for our hidden state farming system, we are looking to, to use uh, uh, such sequential data, and um, our data sets are pleaded to two categories. They are sequential data and non sequential data. Sequential data is just uh, the, uh, all frames uh, from the video, but uh, such frames are ordered, and so uh, we are uh, processing this chunk uh, in one row. And non sequential data is just uh, an image pair. Uh, which is uh, have positions in the uh, regional video frames uh, i and i plus one. So uh, we have, of course, official data sets. Uh, they are sequential and non sequential. And for sequential, we have uh, such data sets as Sintel and KD15. Uh, due to the lack of such data sets, so we also used the segmentation ones, the uh, YouTube post and DAS. Uh, we used uh, uh, state of the art methods as flow former to auto label such uh, uh, data sets and use for uh, training our refinement systems. Uh, according to non sequential data, we have used them for the whole context of the optical flow estimation. Uh, we have used uh, blind shares, blind scenes, KG1K. Um, that's it. Uh, according to the method, we have uh, three of them. Um, First of all, it's um, the typical approach will improve flow form and performance. Quite nice. So the second of all, it's a uh, flow like state requirement can be trained and get similar results at the base uh, state of the art methods. But uh, with this help, we can reduce uh, the number of iterative iterations in the iterative part and the execution time. And uh, the third one is flow can be estimated by some of the previous motion uh, motion on Let's talk, uh, let's dive it in. It's in it and uh, first hypothesis the deploy approach will improve flow form and performance. Uh, we assume that uh, with this approach we can reduce uh, uh, time and update lock uh, iteration numbers. Um, due to the flow and flow form is uh, our state of the art methods, and uh, the flow uh, it's just a frame to optimize properly such uh, optical flow model models. And uh, here we say that uh, the clock has all the base. Uh, such base uh, is a uh, rough uh, architecture, and uh, according to flow former, which is have, uh, uh, has a rough like architecture, we can change uh, uh, rough to flow former and get better performance. Uh, this is our met uh, method, how it shows that we are adding flow former to the flow, and the results uh, um, this, the next one we got uh, uh, a little bit poor. Uh, EPE results. It's uh, this uh, a table shows the average results from the central uh, data set, uh, which separated on clean and final uh, subgroups. And um, also, uh, according to iteration and seconds, uh, we are shown that we, with the deck flow approach, we reduce a little bit uh, uh, iteration numbers. Uh, it's when we are sharing the previous state from the image pair to the next one. Uh, hence, we are adding additional features to uh, uh, processing the kit flow with the kit flow. And uh, here you can see the work start. It's just uh, sharing the previous optical flow to the uh, current image pair uh, didn't help. Uh, 
so we can say that uh, hypothesis one is uh, weakly accepted. Uh, according to hypothesis two, we are uh, saying that the flow like a uh, stage family can be uh, can be trained and get similar results as the uh, stage of methods. And uh, with this help, we can reduce the numbers of iteration numbers and uh, reduce the time of such executions. Uh, here we find out that the, the bottleneck of such systems are update block. Uh, uh, the update block is the recurrent network, and uh, the recurrent network requires a lot of time. And uh, we want to uh, to stay with our metrics uh, without the implementation. Uh, we uh, uh, we propose you two refinement systems: uh, refinement version one and refinement version two. They require two parts: it's just a refiner and state mixture. Here you can see the, uh, the presentation of the refiner part. Uh, it's uh, uh, attention based uh, mechanism. It uses attention based mechanism with uh, key query and value. Key uh, query is a uh, previous image and targeting image, and value is a previous thing which uh, uh, after attention uh, worked, it's content related and uh, uh, treating the current state. It's kind of a connection according to ResNet ideology. And uh, according to state mixture, we are mixing actually refined uh, data with uh, data from the context network. Uh, it's uh, um, uh, this context network provides features of the hidden state and uh, input uh, from the uh, current image pair, and hence uh, we need to use them too. Uh, the second version of the refinement uh, it, it, uh, it gives us the same refinement system as the first part, and the second part uh, part is kind of an also one. It uh, uses additional conditional uh, created recurrent update, which um, um, which uh, adds uh, some of re uh, recurrency to our system, uh, and uh, this ideology kind of imitates the update block uh, work. Uh, hence, we have added such a uh, recurring part. And uh, as you can see here, we have used our resident blocks to um, encode uh, our features. So the results uh, are quite interesting. Here you can see that in this uh, starting picture, we achieved a uh, uh, really great uh, reduction of the iterations and the second, uh, second usage. Um, it's uh, 3.8. Uh, and with the refinement system, we reduced uh, this um, state a lot. Um, so uh, I would say that our system, uh, as this hypothesis, is accepted. But EPE is quite um, um, a little bit large for us. Uh, it's not as a base uh, model of the flow former. Um, and it's done because uh, there is a small amount of um, it is done because it's a small amount of uh, their, uh, iterations. And um, you understand, of course, when we are having a lot of iterations, uh, it uh, kind, of, uh, kind of refines the system and adds the kind of uh, good details to it. And uh, when we are reducing it to 3.8, uh, we remove this. So uh, we have hypothesis 3. Uh, here we can say that the uh, plot can be estimated based on the previous motion only. And it's quite nice that uh, we are assuming that uh, having uh, the previous information only we can predict the next iteration. Uh, it's done due to our assumption that the movement is quite linear. And uh, when we see the direction of the pixel, we can actually assume the next point of view. Uh, and the results are quite uh, the next one. The first image is just uh, the output from our refinement system. And the two uh, the next images, the two next images are actually the last iterations of the update block. Uh, first image is quite nice, I think. Uh, uh, and uh, if the uh, results of such a refinement system shows that uh, it's not random and uh, uh, with uh, five peaks EPE, uh, we are give, uh, we are we are given uh, uh, we are getting 80%, which is quite well for us. And after small amounts of refinements, we can achieve it. Uh, also, we tried to, to remove uh, such ideology with solving criteria and uh, uh, see how it can be it can work uh, without it and uh, how can it can perform. And uh, we are seeing here that our refinement version two uh, achieves the best results of EB. Uh, it's uh, 0 0.82%. Uh, uh, attitude is simple, 
and uh, it's quite well for us, and uh, we accept this hypothesis. Uh, according to EPM uh, completion results, here you can see the chart that uh, represents us the refinement question to result uh, less and better. It's the EPU results uh, due, uh, due to iterations. Uh, also, um, I saw uh, your, your previous remarks and suggestions, and uh, 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 this person told me that uh, there is a lack of method, method diagrams and description, so I added it. Uh, also, it was kind of minor inaccuracies in the text, so I also fixed them, and uh, there was a lack of result uh, visualizations. So I added several charts and uh, uh, tables to show it. According to my summarization, so I approved uh, three hypotheses. It's that the Kipflow approach will improve performance performance with the whole state uh, HKW. And uh, it will the Kipflow like uh, state refinement can be trained and get similar performance results without uh, metric degradation and uh, reduction of the iteration part. Also, how can be estimated based on the previous motion only? Uh, we can say that. Um, uh, we produce decent results uh, and uh, it can be shown in the, uh, the image and also charts of the EP. And our main components uh, were flow former, decade flow, kinetic refinements, they are refinement version one, refinement version two. That's all for now. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please ask. Um, I hope the previous recourse was here in uh, Japan. Apparently, you want to test the improvement of tactic flow mm -hmm. for the billboard. What you mentioned the number of iterations. Yes, yeah. there is some improvement. Um, I would say you. Um, here, uh, this hypothesis was uh, really excited, and uh, the idea was uh, that, that we are getting the state of the uh, for former having uh, to eat the data flow approach to optimize it. And with the Bonilla ideology of combining such methods, uh, we are getting the, the next result 53.4 uh, iterations. Okay, great time. With the digital marks and uh, um, Approaching, we can reduce that iterative part to figure three point uh, uh, two, and this better. I would say that the uh, iterations are different from uh, another iteration. This I told you three point eight. Remember, because uh, they used uh, another um, update ideology. I mean that uh, the standard of software uh, methods. Use uh, recurring networks of the update block uh, from one time to another time. Uh, the default approach uses the next data that we are getting such let's say from the update block, and it adds additional recurring network which, which is small, a lot small, and uh, uses uh, 53 directions to update such hidden state from their update block of their general optical four and um. All state of references is there can be different for uh, and the uh, use of optical uh, update block only. So, uh, the answer to the equation is uh, we are I'm talking that uh, stage having and sequence three uh, helps to reduce that iteration. And uh, that's it. Yeah. Well, it's pretty good to reduce the number of iterations in terms of the goals. Yeah. I should know about that. If I look into the second scope, Mm -hmm. I would say that it's also good to reduce the number of iterations because the number of seconds is increasing. Mm -hmm. So the performance is creating mm -hmm. with, with a decrease of the number of iterations. Could you comment on that? Yes, of course. Um, I would say that uh, such uh, patterns are uh, um, average number and uh, it can be also iterations that also average. In <laughs> Definitely. Um, but I would say that uh, definitely using uh, state sharing can add additional seconds, but 
I would say that with such a port, uh, with space sharing, you can add additional content from the previous image. And so um, with further approaches, add more context and uh, uh, converge the model back. Uh, of course, it can uh, increase the number of segments, but uh, if we can play with uh, such parameters that we can, for example, break after uh, 50 first iterations and uh, add additional subject criteria, we can uh, benefit our uh, iteration number. I mean, uh, to reduce them more well. And uh, in this way, we use all the standards. They, uh, by, by definition, iterations are incremental. I mean, how you can have fractional iterations. <coughs> okay. Oh, uh, that's uh, uh, so the equation is all normal, but uh, uh, you know that it's average result of for the whole data set. And in one case, it performed uh, to create, uh, for example, 50. For iterations uh, always and for uh, more things, okay. yeah, but, but how I mean, then you should provide middle iterations in the uh, in yeah, general. yeah, yeah. I understand you. I know what does the standard in this case? I may also add to this, but uh, also to the number of the number of iterations. It depends on how close to the yeah. solution you are. So the number of iterations can be larger, but because you are close, uh, they will not be very costly because lots of things are zero, for instance. So it's not, uh, I would also not. Use it as 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 a metrics for no no yeah. uh, I understand you but um, um, I would say that um, iterations for us iterations is quite essential because so, uh, for example when we are watching uh, such approaches to mobile phones for great devices uh, we can see the bottleneck quite wider and so iterate. Uh, we are not seeing the um, number of rate of settings because it can depend on different, uh, for example, which you may be affected to the model. Uh, we are seeing that it really we can, we, we can um, optimize. And uh, that's why we are seeing that iterations are one of the main methods for our redux. So maybe then blobs come, not iterations. Uh, uh, we can use blobs too. And so this is a proposed metrics for our visualization and putting that results still work or not. And then maybe uh, about these uh, metrics, you can just jump to the page land. Is it pixels or? I also use the form of the gas. Oh, what's the and also, what is this B? Is it a single vector or a vector field? And then, what is the norm? If it is, if it is a vector or a vector field, what is what the norm of this? Uh -huh. Vector. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I would say that uh, this B is the uh, matrix. Uh, um, it's just a um, two dimensional image. Of the optical phone, when we are having uh, our directions due to um, width and height, uh, the change the kind of delta uh, is kind of delta. We want to uh, produce uh, in our phone such uh, delta for x and y. So, let me uh, just uh, ask for this, for this formula. Yeah. Is delta x the same for all x? So, is it a vector? Is it just a display? No, it is just a skill. For each uh, pixel, you have a different direction. Mm -hmm. different vector. So, then this uh, B is a vector field. Yeah. So, what matrix is it? Um... Excuse me, uh, it's, it's uh, just uh, an including distance between the uh, uh, such two matrices. matrices. Okay, so including distance okay. mm -hmm. because it's not true. Okay, yeah. yeah, and it's in pixels. Mm -hmm. uh, pixels movement, it's just uh, um, we are showing that for uh, each position of the pixel, 
from the, for example, frame one, we are having a side track of the deflector uh, in, for example, uh, X value. And uh, after it, uh, we are uh, showing, we are comparing it with its ground truth result and uh, showing that, for example, our fetch result was S. The units are X. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's to make our more I still have a question. If we turn back to slide 17 or 18 or any, yeah. any slide on the table. Um, yeah, anyone. Um, yeah, just please choose anyone you like most. And please recap what. Is the difference between the clean and final? Okay. Which has not been said yeah. in your presentation. Um, this data set, uh, this uh, chart is going to single data set, uh, which uh, have, which actually have three parts. Uh, just the simple one when we are having uh, the Proper right rendering is uh, different shaders uh, and uh, different uh, uh, terms of uh, additional color painting of such a uh, video is a final uh, subsequence. And when we are talking about uh, uh, removing shader from the video and uh, creating the frames from it, we are talking about uh, clean. And when uh, we are removing another uh color palettes uh, or maybe uh, removing um additional smoothness we are talking about one more um subsequence of the uh, simple data, uh, data set but uh, the top one is now taken due to the simplicity of it and uh every same chart method to so use the uh simple uh, data step for comparing and to uh, create the final subset of our selection. So they are quite large. They uh, they large and uh, they harder to process. process. Now this is a very good case when just one simple image would save the world. <laughs> we spent some thirty seconds in explaining. I didn't understand anything. Mm -hmm. So just show this is right. This is clean. Yeah, and this is the delivery which is made final in there. Mm -hmm. After I uh, still have a question. The overall one, because the results are uh, so controversial with this, in my interpretation. Yes, interpretation. Is there a silver bullet in yeah. optical the costs? Um, so far, I do not really see it. Yes. Yeah, of course. Um, for now, I would say that uh, there is still the bullet according to different approaches that uh, I was uh, concerned. Uh, according to adding different approaches to refinement system and uh, the whole total system, I mean, if you want to reduce, uh, for example, seconds, we will use the uh, uh, additional stopping criteria, additional. Uh, Mm, former interpolation method and uh, hence it will add additional constraints, the additional accuracy for our method. Uh, so I am assuming that the value will be for the optical for forecasting. And uh, uh, due to this uh, retort, we find out that uh, um, when we are solving both matrices, uh, they are PP and iterations, uh, um, it's quite hard to balance. The system. You are using the iteration, but you uh, you are, for example, reducing also the EP. You are lacking the iterations to be bigger, of course, the result will be greater. Uh, this might be for your evaluation methodology is not all powerful. Mm -hmm. So you have chosen uh, well, the contradictory and then measures like mm -hmm. iterations in seconds. EP is also something what's kind of the biggest And uh, yeah, I like a sort of a clear objective in the UF evaluation, the objective in the business. Mm -hmm. What was that objective? What would you prefer to arrive at? 
what is the place, the point in the solution space you're aiming at? Yeah. Uh, the main aim for us actually was to speed up the system, reduce speed up the system, the first point, the second point, reduce the number of operators. You know, is it for our main approaches, the, the idea that we want to call it? Um, so we want to add additional context with uh, this sequential data and to uh, uh, increase, uh, uh, just you know, reduce the PPE result. But uh, um, this is uh, our main objectives. And uh, we knew that with the iteration reduction, uh, we can reduce the PPE, we can increase the PPE, but not really. So it, it's uh, kind of lost the state uh, of the art method. Uh, so it's not enough for us. Uh, in this way, we are showing that the means of uh, lacking to be, be a little bit greater, we can uh, uh, create a quicker solution that can be, for example, ported on mobile phones for different video or image editing, drop and go, uh, you are scrolling, you are selecting everything, and you are getting it. Uh, you're not paying, for example, for two seconds or three seconds. Uh, we reduce this time a little. A little. Okay. And uh, I, I mean that uh, it's shown just uh, for image fair, but uh, you understand that uh, if you are having large data sets, uh, it can go for a while, and uh, even uh, every millisecond is better for you. No, I don't. I don't okay. understand just because you didn't show us. See, one more thing. I'm, I'm not sitting here to uh, to emphasize them. Yeah, I'm sitting here to to enjoy a clear and complete presentation by a colleague. Okay. Was the word right? It's for me, me, uh, EPE. It's uh, me. Uh, actually, it's me. Everything covered. It's because of the game. The more you show, it's not me. Mm -hmm. Some questions to think about development uh, speed. Um, the second is for the verified. The second is for um, players of uh, or suppose a whole data set is for the one video. Okay. Um, here you can see that uh, we have. Uh, uh, okay, let us clear. Uh, we are having to sub subset the. Uh, Clean and final, and uh, every uh, every value, uh, I mean, for iteration, seconds, pp, it's just uh, uh, the mean uh, amount of, for example, iteration, seconds, uh, pp, respectively, due to uh, clean, uh, sub, sub, and final, sub, sub. and and it and it's done due to uh, one inch pair. So um, there. Mean value is uh, just a reduction of the uh, image pair, number of okay. the image pair. So, uh, am I right to understand that this uh, speed for the payment on the like, top notch uh, harder with small and media 39? No, uh, it was straight, uh -huh. but the elevation was only on the one uh, video card, uh, and it uh, it was taken for about six gigabytes of the uh, GPU memory. But one video card, the 39. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what is about like um, not so top of hardware? Um... Uh, I understood you. Uh, we, can, we can use uh, average GPU. Which is greater than uh, 6.5 uh, gigabytes. And uh, I think the performance will be uh, quite the same, but a little bit interpolated. I mean, that if you are getting, for example, 118, 118 uh, it will be, for example, 0 0.3, according uh, to the first method in second, uh, and it will be a little bit lighter. Let me describe an idea why I'm asking this question. Okay. Uh, uh, so is very good uh, task for uh, analyzing the uh, battlefield. Yeah, uh, with me, for military uh, in real time. Yeah. 
And uh, this way, uh, your work results will be obtained by the practice for our different okay. And uh, I'm trying to understand, is it possible to use this methods on like single hardware, which is not accessible for most of the different mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, uh, you can start to perform your uh, estimations, or if you only it will take um, a lot of time. For example, uh, certain seconds only for one each pair, and it's a lot. When, so when, when we are using, for example, um, some small data centers, centers for example, uh, we are seeing that we have several of the two. Um, for example, 80 uh, video cards, uh, and we are talking according to that uh, some military men uh, use the uh, image, got image, that uh, sends us the uh, information. We are uh, completely computing it and sending it back. Uh, this is a way of communication, computer workflow, uh, just uh, not simply to be hard to know. So we have very big, very narrow bottleneck for this. Of course. I and maybe another question related to this. In your earlier hypothesis, you said that uh, you um, assess the quality of given state environment. Yes, but yeah. now you, uh, uh, from your answers, it seems that uh, processing every consecutive pair is too costly for ordinary equipment. Uh, can we think just every pen? Frame, but uh, uh, instead of linear approximation, let's uh -huh. use project. Uh -huh. um, let me think about it. I think of course can, but there is a problem that optional uh, forms up is a piece of displacement one. So, uh, for example, we are seeing it to this day. When I'm uh, moving, for example, behind the occlusion, we will not see me, and some pieces will, uh, will be missed. And I'm, I mean that uh, if for the person or whatever object is moving really fast, um, it's very hard to uh, localize such people and their movement. And uh, even if, if we don't know any information of the previous uh, pixel, it will hard us to generate. And so it would be better for us to have such small displacement of the object, and uh, after uh, we will produce our optical flow estimation. Uh, according to theoretical technology, of course, I think it would be great to research for the, our improvements, uh, which is quite well nice, definitely. And also, can we use the whole uh, number of seconds uh, which we have taken? Teacher with a suggestion we can use the optical flow estimating to to evaluate the number of um, the frames you can skip. So mm -hmm. yeah. often we have a Yeah, if you think you need to take every pair as a pair or just the um I um, we just the uh, second according to our uh, it's a digital uh, sentence that according to our system, system we are that uh, we are interested in such ways when uh, we are moving, for example, our object or video, our frame. And uh, for example, the object stays for a while. And uh, the thing that uh, affects to the actual flow estimation will uh, rerun every 12. Um, a lot of average child, for example, iterations, uh, which is which we didn't, uh, we don't need it because the object is still, and uh, we can reuse the previous information from this such statement and uh, say that we should have, for example, one average or zero ones, and it will be very fast. Yes, thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, greetings, everyone. I would like to present my thesis on the healthy vegan supervised tools in the day in the bit of multiple stars. So, the agenda will be the following. We'll talk about medical delay in the work hypothesis, of course, on the slide, technical background, related work, data sets, pipeline, results, the conclusions, future work, and questions that we will ask. Um, so I will start with medical domain. So what we try to solve, we try to find tumor on the image. So this one, this is the image of CT scan. Uh, it's actually uh, most of the time it's voxel, so it is like photo um, of a uh, body scan, and this is just one part of it. Um, you can see that the tumor is a yellow one, and the uh, the green one is a kidney. And we try to focus on kidney tumors only. Uh, and a tumor is a collection or a cluster of abnormal cells that is within the body. Uh, aim of the work was following. We work on reprocessing this data set. I will focus on it later. Uh, and also, do, we propose a pipeline to do classification tasks as well as segmentation tasks to detect the tumor on age. We have several hypotheses. The first one is that we could supervise the approach for help potential for tumor segmentation and can we achieve promising results. So in general, that we just are able to find at least something using we could supervise the approach. Uh, the next one is that square count, uh, one of the specific count approaches can outperform other specific count approach. I will also focus on them later. Um, uh, also, the third one was that given the limited amount of available, available data, uh, we can see that shallow one, shallow one model can uh, outperform bigger one uh, because it can learn some high level features and not, not go into depth uh, and concentrate on just like some, some sites for particular images, not general, um, general things on images. And the last one is that supervised approach will outperform with a supervised approach. Uh, it's obvious, but the interesting idea behind this is that to find how close we can get to this. So just to, to compare them. Um, so technical background. Class information mapping is a technique used for uh, evolutional neural networks. It's general. Uh, Something we built on top of this computing neural convolutional neural network. It uh, gives us an idea of where the model talks its attention. Uh, we can this way uh, identify an uh, interesting area and also see uh, which patterns the model recognizes the image altogether. Um, and also find what which cues the model find on image in general. Uh, the count approach itself has limitation. It can't be worked on uh, some architect model architectures, uh, while grad count is capturing importance on feature maps and works as it takes gradient and it can be worked on more bigger amount of architectures. Um, grad count plus plus is working similar to grad count, but it has uh, Improvement on calculation of gradients, uh, combination of gradients, smooth grad count plus plus is extension of grad count plus plus, and tries to use uh, not only the pixel but the region around it. So what, that's why it's smooth. Uh, and the next one is square count. It's different from the previous one. It tries to uh, calculate importance by the square. Uh, the, so we try to use smaller regions and uh, see what models 
which completely support the model, the model gaps or a this concrete class. And from this, we try to um, understand the importance of this section of an image. Um, also, because COM approach itself has some limitations, and we at the first start, we we think we were thinking that we can use this COM as well. So just to see how it runs, the the most simple one. Um, we use ResDev only for a classification model. Uh, still, we can uh, use. Uh, we will talk about that, but actually, we can use other models as well. Uh, try to use other vectors, and maybe this will improve our performance. Um, yeah, so we can improve this one. Uh, there is some related works. And so the first one was exporting the value of uh, surprise learning on artifacts, uh, segmentation in the microscopy image. So what is artifacts is something uh, abnormal on an image. Um, and why this approach was interesting to us because it uses um, medical images and it's trying to work with super supervised approach in them. Uh, we can see that here we have Redmond 50 for binary classification and then squaring up was extracting set the labels and they were felt to do that to generalize the, um, the findings. And the results were good. Uh, the next one is cluster activation mapping. So it's also a project that uses Sparkram. It changed it to, um, to do the clustering on the data. Um, while we have, and the, the idea was to uh, divide the clusters with abnormal and not abnormal uh, voxels, voxels in uh, volumes. And so, but still, we, the, it's not like prediction of good or of normal or uh, normal uh, tumors or like voxels, it's more just clusterization and someone needs to be on top of that. Some person needs to uh, give some description of these clusters and talk on this. Uh, it's not something the model can predict. And the next one is because supervised convolution of neural networks or granular tumor segmentation on CPA images. So this one is also using um, on it's working on medical images. We generate several labels by several convolutional networks, uh, and then we so general idea that we construct the pseudo labels so that they train the real model and do the predictions on on them. And we can see that the results are quite good. Um, in general, in our approach, we can't use. Um, some uh, paper that works ex exactly as what we do because more of the time kidney tumor is worked on voxel level and not on the image level I was working on. So um, yeah, so that's uh, the results and why we try to achieve some of them. So there is a potential to be a supervised approach in general for medical images. So if you talk about data set, and the first data set we were working on was uh, depletion. It has a lot of outdated voxels. If you focus on kidney tumor, we can see you have 500 of kidney tumor outdated voxels. The issue with this one is that we actually have uh, something like an image. We have only central slice of tumor with two lines on top of them. So we can't, we don't have like se real segmentation in here. We only have some uh, area of interest and only on one side. So we can't like use it as segmentation. Uh, but the next one is Kids 21, which actually has uh, segmentation itself on each of the images uh, or voxel. Um, we, so here is a big amount of uh, health examples and tumor examples. Uh, I will dive into it a little bit later, but in general, uh, this big amount of images is first of all that we use voxels and not, uh, uh, so we like use slices in voxels so we have bigger amounts. As well, we split the, as you show on the picture, we split it to two kidneys. So we have 
twice and take examples. Uh, it's not working every time, uh, but like we, we don't have tumor, we cannot have tumor on two sides, or we may have. So it depends on segmentation, but still it gives us uh, more examples for the data. Uh, the issue with that is that if you use voxels, uh, the images that are next to each other are similar. So it's sometimes that we have a lot of similar images coming in. Uh, here is also examples of the data. So the first column is healthy. The second one is just some representation of the data. The second column is tumor. And the third one is also the tumor. It's just to visually see how you uh, where is the tumor or the picture without the segmentation. So you want to know the ground truth. You can see that it's not like, easy to find it if you're not a specialist. So it's it, it, this is the reason why it may be challenging for the model as well. Uh, here is some overview of what the tumor in the, if you talk about sizes of the tumor from the image. So this graph shows a number of images with uh, y-axis and uh, uh, percentage of uh, coverage of the image to the x-axis. And we can see that we have a great amount of tumors with actually small, small percentage of coverage. Uh, also, um, you can see visually how it looks like on, uh, on the real data. So, the, also, we have a, a lot of examples with smaller percentage just because we have a really a big amount of them coming in here. Uh, so, pre processing, as I said, we divided the original image to two slices. It was done for um, simplifying the task itself. Also, it was done by uh, centering the kidney uh, for each of them. Uh, and as you can see, it is this line goes straight on the center uh, of the image, so that we want to uh, double, we want to have one area where we have two kidneys or uh, the, the one that we are not splitting like correctly. Uh, on the in future works, it may be replaced by some models that will try to find kidneys and like have this square in there. Uh, it's important to mention that we have train validation and test, and it's uh, and we need to be sure that one patient won't go to several of these groups. So we split each uh, this group was split by actually patients by voxels, and then we split the voxels in there. So that's why it's like you can see that the uh, data is not like uh, the number of images are slightly different for validation and test, for example. Uh, also, uh, there is small difference for percentage of images with tumor on the images itself. The test data has a little bit bigger amount of uh, tumor in there. Uh, we propose this pipeline. Uh, so it's actually that we have an uh, image coming into classifier. We have a tumor, we classify it is tumor or not. Uh, we have a count model on top of it. Um, and which, so Comfortable just produces uh, this uh, red uh, heat map, and then we do threshold and the blue lines signalize uh, the region that what was popped on. Uh, here is some experiments. So we try ResNet 15, ResNet 101. So all data means that we use every image of the voxel. Part of the data means we take every first image. Um, so it was done for uh, that if you have similar images one after another, so we try to make them more different, and we just don't use part of the images. Um, and the augmentation uh, means we, so in general, we can't like rotate the images, we can't uh, flip them just because there is other organs around, so it's not like, it's not something that the model can uh, have in real data. So the augmentation was blurring, it didn't help us, uh, for the best result, we can see, so if we look at that one score, it's just that 50 part of the data, it's 65.31%, and for all the data, for the 101, it's 65.39. Um, they are not like, 
it will be better to have better results, but still uh, there, there is area there is area for improvement, and uh, maybe some later results will depend on this one. So if we improve this model, it may be beneficial later. For ResNet 101, it's the best one from this slide. It's third line. And we have this uh, computer, uh, computer metrics. Uh, on the yellow, it's 598. Uh, so, but the, the main problem, the main issue I have is that we didn't find tumors on the image that has it, on a big amount of images. So it's 124. <laughs> and it's also something we need to improve. And here is some of the results on bad predictions. So you can see that the model focuses uh, on the, so that, that's, that's where the model uh, said that there is no tumor while it is there. So we can see where it is uh, focusing, the right area is the, the, the main focus. Also, the blue line is for the segment. We'll talk about it a bit later. Uh, but yeah, so we can see that uh, it's, uh, and not growing so good and not finding this tumor actually. Uh, if we talk about results of the supervised model, they are following. Uh, we use Prat and A plus plus, with Prat A plus plus and Spoilcom. Um, and with different result, which we are choosing for each of them, we can see that the best results are for Spoilcom, while actually Gladcom is quite good as well. And here is some pictures of how it is performing. Um, so the white uh, line is from truth. The red, uh, the, the dark red is the main focus of the model. Uh, blue line is something we choose with thresholding. Um, yeah, and there is uh, different approaches in there. We can see that actually models just find this humor, but uh, if you talk about the last one, as the last uh, example, it isn't working so well. I will do it a bit faster. <laughs> and also, we compared our model with supervised approach, with the net approach, which was using uh, actually segmentations in there. We can see that UNET still has some uh, auditing problems actually with uh, this approach, with this data. So we think that the issue may be that we don't have enough data in there. And here is a representation of UNED. You can see that actually uh, on this case it works quite well, but if you look on the last one and on the second one, it didn't detect it, detect it while GraphCom and SquareCom like, tries to find it. But in general, just because model was looking like mm, the, the model uh, classification model isn't working on segmenting actually the um, Kidney, the kidney tumor, so it's just working a little bit white. So there is also something we need to improve some way to, while just taking a smaller threshold didn't help because then we'll get small, we will not detect something, uh, some other tumors. Uh, conclusions. Uh, so first one, the result of the first one, we actually see that big supervised approach can detect tumor and is able to a segment tumor not really well. It's not it can't use it like in just to detect it by itself, but it can be helping uh, other people. Uh, the second one is that score farm score uh, outperforms some of the platform approaches, but the platform itself is not actually uh, doesn't have worse uh, worse so. It's it's just a little uh, of answer to this one. Um, the next one is that finding um, so it was about shallower or uh, bigger deeper networks. We can see that it, it depends highly on the um, it depends highly on the configuration of the model. Some uh, also we can see that some model was the one model that is shallower was performing uh, nearly as well as the deeper one. And the last one is that supervised approach outperform with supervised. Uh, it is this way, but still, it's uh, the difference is not uh, the, the big one, and we can try to achieve it. Um, and so, some uh, area where we can use it 
it can be used for uh, help laborers to do the simulation for tumor task. Um, here to work, it's actually using more data. For example, uh, we know that there is uh, kids 23 coming. Uh, and uh, so in there, we have a big amount of data. It is available right now. Um, we can try to improve Grad Compass Plus, it's most Grad Compass Plus, and they are performing badly. So maybe there is something we can do with them. Um, next part is do the research for using LSTM, for example. So just because we have voxels and the model itself can benefit from several similar Im images where the tumor may be bigger and easier to define in general. Um, and uh, the another one is use 3D square comp for 3D model to then do the uh, fragmentation better and use and see where the 3D model looks and find the regions of the most interest. Uh, here is some review questions. So the first one was like an effect score analysis of data set, distribution of health and effective images, uh, some explanation on CT scans, and job general insight on tumor size. So I added this one. It was also something I showed here. So it's about tumor and sizes and how different they are in our data set. Uh, about CT devices, uh, I suggest that it's the same CT device because we use only one data set. Uh, while the, some issue we can have if we use several of them is that actually the CT devices may be different and uh, there is need to be some threshold in edit or just some preprocessing, additional preprocessing added. Uh, about architectures and parameters, um, so we can't use actually the trained network itself because our images are one year one layer images, uh, while MGB images has two layers and most of the models has three layers for input. The last one, uh, so investigation on false positives, false negatives, visually discount. So this one is shown before, so the model still fails with both small tumors and big tumors. So there is some uh, lacking of data or just we need to use another mistake. That's all from my side. Do you have some questions? And thank you. Um, I have a much longer question about the uh, just mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so um this is a good question. Uh actually we think that it may be because we are not having I would say um, diversity of the images. So we have a lot of images, but still just because we use these voxels. There is only 300 people having taken this CT scan. Uh, then we create it to a uh, brain validation test, and the amount of images is smaller, and they are not the different itself. Um, I would say that also we, we need to try other structures, but from what we find, that actually the deeper one isn't helping significantly. So maybe it's actually the uh, trying different aspects itself, but not having deeper model. Uh, for example, Let me say, I'm sure that another architecture will help you. I'm thinking about that the way. Um, if you think how to do the vision methods for, for example, you all for us, the mm -hmm. other. Um, it's a bit to box it. The, um, the I, mean, I mean, other things that uh, you have been doing just as many mm -hmm. frames, and for one frame, the first time you find it, yes, for you spread. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, biker, another frame, by frame, so frame, no bike. Mm -hmm. That's no bike. Post frame, again, bike, a again, the end of the So, I think, uh, I'm just thinking if it is possible, if you have more stars and you can from different angles from something like this, then you can like uh, do better things. I'm not sure if it is. Mm -hmm. uh, like focus on the CT, yes, because you have just one. Yeah, but, but we, yeah, so how do you Yeah, so general idea about that we we will benefit from actually having voxels. So we uh, split 
I will say that maybe if the one picture model can't find the tumor, but we can on another similar one that can't find. So if we like do the, the both pictures together, we may be beneficial then we may take benefit. But uh, yeah, so it could be actually and in general, the a lot of um, papers written on kids, uh, the data set I do, it's actually referring to it as a voxels and you as a voxel. So it's uh, used PD models to uh, segment it. Um, he was just interested in is it possible to have it on the slices? Um, it's sort of like the, the output is that we can we can have it, but we either use another structure or think how we can use at least some part of the voxels, if not all of them, but the, not the, the pure picture is is not enough in our case. Um, and uh, other part of this question, um, do comparing like ideally, um, ideally market images with uh, like a specialist based uh, computer, model, but uh, from other side, I mean, uh, would this model help somehow in a real situation if it misses fifty uh, percent with with the poly and something? Yeah. So, but maybe, uh, so uh, maybe like average doctor fails with more uh, situations than this model. Can we compare it somehow with? Uh, yeah, so, so in general, I don't have this comparison of like how often do human fail, but uh, as we can see, actually the images. So it's not like easy to detect if you if you're not faithful. Uh, as well, if you have a lot of the spacings coming in, it's, it's actually difficult to like, to detect it. But actually, as you said, the problem is that we, we are not good enough to tell them for now. Um, still, if we, uh, for example, validation data was better one for uh, having better conclusion metrics, you have only 500 on uh, this axis where we have 1000 now, but it's validation data, so it's not something we can use. But some ideas is that maybe we just can use. Um, there's images that come one after another and use uh, some, I would say, generalized prediction of them. If you find at least one picture from the like, five or ten with a tumor, then you need to generalize it. Maybe this can like, improve uh, the, the performance and actually be better for your prediction. Um, also, like, if you look in here, um, the model itself is focusing like on a bigger one. Okay, it's that question, but. Okay. So we can see that the model is not focusing actually where we need it. So it just um, signalizes us that this area may be there is maybe tumor. It also works differently for uh, in other pictures. Uh, and still, this intersection of the is bad because the model looks in a bigger amount of image, bigger like, amount of image itself. And not like, focusing on some concrete part. Um, it's also something will be better to improve because from this, it's not uh, like easy to help people, uh, but still, it, it gives at least some focus on the part of uh, the images that may have a tumor. Also, if you see actually this ground truth count and input images, there is also the tumor is not so easy to detect it uh, a little bit. Uh, uh, hard to do it itself. So maybe maybe this is the, the issue. Maybe we need to do some I don't know contrasting or uh, something that will so that at one part it will help human to detect the ingredients, the tumor in there. But on the other part, it's it just it's difficult if you don't know what you're looking for. It's not so easy to find it by human eye. My, my, my related question to this is that we already have labeled images, so we know the images to them. So, with this um, poor result, there is helping doctors because, uh, as far as I understand, the main objective is to help doctors to, to segment the mm -hmm. tumors. But if the result is so poor, mm -hmm. is it of any help? 
it will be a doctor uh, using the results. So uh, maybe it's not an improvement, not a help at all. Um, if it distracts attention, even. Uh, it's, so that's why we suggested to use for a labor, not as a doctor to help people, uh, but just to do some additional um, work on this one. Also, if we go back to the creative work, um, some similar approach was done in here. So the first one, they use the square account and then they extract it as center labels to your net. So maybe this is the area we move so that you net will work on the standard labels and just actually try to find a few more in there and not use labels. In general, why we want to use this secret supervising college? Because then we need um a first part for training we need on the labels do we have tumor or not but when the model is trained for classification we have more for segmentation and we don't need any labels later. so this idea is that having this approach we make those uh easier to think these labels that are easier to get and are not so difficult to get because we don't need to, to segment tumor itself we just need to say is it there or not so that's the idea. So it does have, and this way we may have bigger data sets if you just need to have the label tumor or not. You have uh, in your work high precision and low recall. How can we interpret uh, this result? What does it mean? So it's very short the schematics. Is that we have a lot of. Um, prediction of we like this tumor but it was actually there so we can see that the so it, it's a 100 1024 uh, values uh, images we missed the tumor so we need to find it but there was no there so it's even worse because yeah we, we missed the tumor yeah yeah uh, so yeah and uh, uh, yeah, so, so we need to like the, the first improvement yeah, to be I mean, when, you, when you found this uh, uh, did you try anything to improve? I mean, did you try and then uh, yes, yeah, so I don't know. Um, Uh, I'm thinking that maybe the small tumor was causing this, and we run the experiment where we try to uh, use only tumors which are bigger than two percent. It's still uh, like not so, no, it's still small tumors, but just bigger ones of them. Uh, but these results did improve the intersection over here. Uh, I was focusing on this part, uh, but. Uh, yeah, so for for the bad predictions, if we talk about bad predictions, uh, uh, it's um, I guess they can't be improved by, but maybe just use other structure or um, more amount of the data. Yeah. So, you like to talk about the selling of a yeah. small number of among images, and you decided to be better. So, in general, we can you know, like change the track code for not having to predict much worse. But uh, I'm not sure what will be the result. Maybe it still would be like bad, and you will predict uh, for a couple of people there is not that there is a tumor, but it's not. So we just may go to the other side, uh, and for that, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, it, it won't be actually uh, influencing this part because it's just where the model looks, and this uh, reporting on the, is the tumor or not is not influencing this one. It's just how the model performs, and we will just change the record. So maybe this changing record for classification task may help us. But for now, I don't have numbers how will this matrix will be changing. And change it. Uh, also, the problem would be that we just, as you see, we have a bigger amount of 
images with no tumor. So that's maybe a reason for it. That prediction. Still got some questions to Thank you. So you mentioned anti-semantic segmentations so over there. What is semantic segmentation? Yeah, so semantic segmentation is actually um, uh, predicting for a pixel uh, some uh, label. So, for example, in our task, if we use uh, UNET, we do semantic segmentation. We choose for a pixel, for one pixel, is it tumor, is it kidney, is it background. In our task, we was using only tumor or not no tumor, so it's just a tiny to pixel uh, label. Is it a classification task? What is semantic? In this yeah, it's, it's classification of pixel, but if you have image, it will be a uh, semantic. So it's classification for each pixel. Okay. Uh, overall, what's your progress beyond the state of the art? You mentioned some state of the art out there. What's your progress? Sorry, what is your progress beyond progress. the state of the art? Yeah, so um, the progress in general, there is no stuff that we can compare, right? like compare it to precisely. Because if you talk about in general about people supervised approach, if we use RGB images, it's not counted the, the same as uh, CT scans. CT scans are the black and white, and there is no big uh, uh, dive into different colors. Uh, the state of the art approaches on kidneys, you were is focusing on uh, uh, actually voxels. Uh, for what we have in here, for the supervised approach and related work, uh, we don't have we don't have improvement on them, but we still we don't have uh, information how they perform on other complete tasks. So you didn't compare your work with the state of the art. Uh, it's because on our case there is no state of the art for image level. Uh, prediction. It is on the voxel level. So, how do you measure it? Uh, we see the results itself. We know okay. it. so, so, it's for now it's this way. Um, enjoy, it, enjoyment trait. <laughs> no, how it, much you enjoy it? <laughs> well, well, so the images. Yeah, it would be a good, uh, good part to. But which of work to, to compare it to some real um, data as to some, I would say, supervised approach that work with the same images. One more question about measure. Uh, you mentioned that with the supervised methods have potential. Did you? Okay. Some, somewhere in the slides, you, you commented a slide saying, Yeah, uh, with, about the supervised mm -hmm. potential. So how would the question comes? How would having potential be measured? You say those methods are having potential. How would you measure your estimation that they have potential? Also, uh, so we talk that we almost compare it with nothing, but we compare it to the lab. We know that it's less. It's better because it uses real data and presentation. It's something we try to compare to. And so UNET itself, uh, I used UNET, it was uh, on the last layer had 520 vector, but there is the UNET with 124. So if we use this UNET, you may get better result. It will look, it will play. It's some, some area of improvement for this supervisor that you can compare it to, to it, but for now we have this 520. Uh, also about UNET. Um, because I'm trying to put both of the models in the same page, uh, for your next training, I use as the pictures where it's not tumor as well. So if it has the label that uh, there is no tumor, just to because my model gets as input both uh, model both pictures with tumor and without, I try to make the head on the same level so it can not just find tumor on every image, uh, but try to. 
understand what is the tumor and that it can be not in the image and it's all the fine. I'm just looking at this small table here. And uh, I'd rather say that with the supervised methods have potential to have no progress but re res below the state of the art. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we're going three against three point point five point five. But we know that supervised approach would be bad because it uses the but early compared to related work. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just uh, reiterating the question about having potential being measured. Okay. Um, so this is the measure of the opposite thing, you know? This is not progress. This is regress. This is the lack of potential. Isn't it? How would you comment? Sorry for what's late. Uh, I would say that uh, the general idea, because we don't have the general idea of the research was just trying to use images and is that good enough? Is that enough data in there so we can uh, do the predictions? Uh, for now, we can say that it's, it has, it can be able to do this, but with this concrete setting, it's. Okay, so it's like white arts that has used images, some has music, and sleep. Yes, it is. Was that the grand objective of your research? We were to have, to have fun. We're trying to get the yes. best results, but it's what we have for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm trying to be careful with some data sets. So, when you try to combine a uh, brain part of all data sets and test part of all data sets, and uh, to like, provide this mixed. Um, um, unsupervised, because mm -hmm. unsupervised learning, and maybe in this way, have more images in the brain set, you could obtain better results with combined tests. Um, so, if you talk about the data, actually, the, the one with segmentation that we can measure is only if it has a label, it has segmentation factor. And this first data set is just shown us. Um, the like one slide only. So we have only like this. We have we have image on the central slice of the tumor. We can do this one image, and we will have like five hundred more images because we have uh, five hundred uh, kidney tumor. But this is just a small amount of images. Uh, still, uh, it will be yeah. So we can use, for example, this five hundred. But we cannot uh, then compare them if they perform it good on the data set because we don't have segmentation to then calculate the section of the data. We don't have parameters. Um, of course, this requires some work, some not a lot of work, but it could be done. No? Uh, adding this 500 images? Uh, yeah, it can be done. But just like in comparing, in here we have 26,000 of images of Jerry, 5,000 of images, and we can add only uh, 500. So it may be different, but also, for example, we can, for example, use um, images without tumor, but they are not like, labeled in here. We want to know that there is, for example, at least kidney so that we can use it for our presentation.
Um, should I turn on my microphone? No. Ready to start? Yes. Um, greetings to everyone. My name is Andrew Stadnik, um, and I did this work under the supervision of uh, James Fritz from the Czech Technical University. The topic of my work is corner localization and camera collaboration from image plastic. Uh, let's begin with the brief introduction into the topic. This work um, centered around the camera collaboration. Uh, here we will uh, refer to the term um, as the geometric camera collaboration. We will not speak about the photometric. Uh, camera collaboration and the geometric camera collaboration uh, is necessary step or it's the process of mapping the points in this 3D world, the space to the pixels position on uh, the image. Uh, this, uh, this this part of the step is a crucial uh, crucial part of various of the vision applications, including 3D, to construct and robotics, augmented reality, photogrammetry, stair vision, and others. And on this image, you can see the example of the image with high desertion, with which we will be uh, working here. Uh, typically, the camera collaboration includes uh, the detection of the visuals on the collaboration board. Here, you can see an example of such work. Uh, on the highly distorted image, you can see that in the black, uh, sorry, in the blue circle, the tiles are uh, the, uh, the shape of roughly uh, square, and the corners are clearly visible. But uh, near the edge where the uh, distortion is more severe, it's not that easy to uh, to actually detect these squares. We they don't look as once and to detect the corners and that is a problem for modern state-of-the-art um, feature detections. Here in this work, uh, our research objective is to um, improve the detection of the collaboration board features uh, from images taken by specifically wide angle or fisheye lenses. For that, we have a set of the research questions, namely. Uh, how to find previously undetected uh, points of the field throughout false positives, and whether there is a need for that at all. It might be that all of the points are detected initially. Uh, let's begin with the related work. There are various of uh, feature detection uh, pipelines, but the, the closest one to what uh, I've done in this research is starting out. This paper was published in 20, uh, 2022. And the idea is to run any calibration tool chain, and they used the calibrate uh, tool chain, then the undisturbed image, meaning that they, um, they change this warped image such that these lines, which are straight, and well work as straight uh, on the image as well. And then uh, they run the calibration again on the undisturbed image. And it means that these tiles, they look at like squares again, and uh, presumably it's easier to detect the traditionals and they prove that uh, actually that's the case. However, this work has a couple of issues. First of all, it's quite heavy, it runs complete calibration to chain on each iteration. It's not so contented to relies on these sort card tools. And lastly, it does not use the geometry information of the portal. Um, explain what you mean by that a little bit later. And uh, in general, the, these are uh, state of the art feature detection uh, You can see the comparison of them. For example, the OpenCV approach, which is quite popular, it requires fully visible board and it also requires information about the shape of the board, the number of rows and counts. And that's 
uh, not often the case that you know that. Also, it seems a lot to uh, medium distortion. Uh, you can see others, uh, other models which uh, actually support the unknown for shape and inclusion, but the tracking is the only one that uses the model based uh, approach to detect extra features, and none of them actually uses the geometry based um, features. Now, going to the approach, I'd like to start with the intuition to such that it would be clear what the main idea behind the work is. Can you, um, on, on this image, certain uh, features were detected, but I artificially removed some of the points. And the question is whether or not you can guess where the missing points should be. Of course, you can because you can clearly see the uh, corners, but um, what if I remove the uh, image? Well, you can still see the gaps because uh, points they form with really visible lines, which are not straight, they are curved, but uh, human can. Uh, can find the gaps there. Although, uh, to do that programmatically, it's not that simple because you have to approximate somehow these lines and group them. That's not easy. But uh, using the uh, camera model, we can rectify this image to uh, make it uh, rectangular. And here you can clearly see the gaps, and moreover, you can easily find the coordinates of the missing point. Note that the on the axis, these are. Um, Visual numbers, you, you can you can see the coordinates of the uh, missing points, and that's the main idea of of the approach to use the points geometry, uh, which we know prior to find the missing corners. Um, now going to the uh, method in detail, let's start with the prototype of the pipeline. First step is the feature detection on the board. Then we use the obtained features to uh, do two-step camera preparation to obtain the uh, camera parameters which we need to uh, project uh, the board back onto the image to find possible locations of the missing features. Third step is imputing the gaps in the board as uh, you saw before the board had gaps and we could easily um, find the positions, the coordinates of these missing uh, points. Then we, uh, as we get these positions of possibly missing points that might be false positive, we have to filter out those to uh, leave only the uh, two, two positions of two corners. Um, you have the supplementary materials with math here. I will go um, broadly on that, but we can go to the details if um, you'd like in the QA section. Uh, as for the notation, we I use the uh, all lowercase letters vectors and uppercase letters for matrices, and typically the homogeneous coordinates I use to simplify the equations. Now, uh, going to the camera parameters, the camera model in general uh, can be divided into three parts: the extrinsic parameters, which uh, transforms the coordinate from the three D world to the um, imaginary. Uh, camera plane, then the distortion parameters which model the imperfections caused by the fact that the uh, lens is not actually a uh, plane, it's not water, it's, it's curved, and the intrinsic parameters which map from this uh, retinal space to the image from millimeters to um, pixels. That's what um, said at the bottom. Here's the definition of the camera model which has been used. Uh, here, uh, the x is the point in 3D, and u is the point on the image. Uh, to project the point from 3D to the image, of course, we have to multiply it by the matrix x, h, which is a homography, and we can discuss later why it is so. Um, one story short is because we assume that the points play on the plane, hence, we can uh, find such coordinate uh, system to set z to zero and it eliminates one um, of, of the rows. Then uh, we apply the disturbing parameter the lake. Plus, we uh, apply the intrinsic matrix, as I said, which uh, maps from the uh, image, from, from the camera uh, space to the image. Now going to each step of the pipeline. First step is the feature detection. For that, we use the approach proposed by um, Jager and others. 
Uh, it consists of a number of steps, first of which is involving the image with uh, two prototypes of the corner. Um, one is um, well, usually the other one is rotated by 45 degrees, and empirically, they also show that that's enough to uh, detect the corners um, in any orientation. After that, the after proposed filtering and some pixel refinement. Lastly, I uh, here refine the board structure, meaning that from the grid of pixels, the grid of uh, coordinates, he infers the uh, coordinates of in the board space, as you uh, have seen before. Then uh, there will be two step under progression um, pipeline. First is uh, first unit to be installed proposed by uh, Scaramuza and others to initialize the camera parameters of, uh, of extrinsics and uh, distortion from the um, obtained points, assuming that the uh, intrinsic matrix is um, is arbitrary. We just picked any um, reasonable matrix, it will be um, found on this second step as, as the um, Scaramuza uh, proposed. The next step is the optimization one, where we try to optimize the uh, reprojection error. The reprojection error is the distance between the measure point and the point which was projected by the model which we derived. And in the ideal world, we would want that to be um, zero, meaning that uh, the model perfectly uh, explains the world. Of course, it never happens, but we try to get as close to that as we can. When we tend the camera parameters, we um, impute the gaps in the board and we extend it by one million column, assuming that that's where the points which were missed might be. You can see an um, example of that on this side. As for the classification, we have to filter out the most positives. To do that, we tried two approaches. One is the question responses, and the other one is the approach what, which was proposed by uh, George uh, Ginger and others. Um, it's actually the same approach which we have used in the first uh, step of the algorithm, the feature detection. We um, keep you the corner likelihood using these two steps, and then we use the RC curve to pick the threshold which maximizes the geometrical mean for the um, classifier. Uh, moving to the experiments, let's start with the metrics. Uh, with the uh, camera calibration, uh, the specific detail is that usually there is no ground truth data because um, it, there's no ground truth space for neural nets, for example. As we cannot compare them to directly, and uh, typically the um, correlated positions are detected on sub pixel level. It's, uh, almost impossible for humans to do that. You have to somehow approximate the lines and find the um, intersection. Hence, uh, we couldn't find any from true state. Hence, we first of all uh, created uh, artificially removed points with the expectation that we can recover them. Then we added the artificial occlusion, which uh, typically causes um, problems to feature detection methods and we like to prove that we can uh, we can recreate or find certain points which were lost due to uh, this evolution near the border of that. And lastly, uh, we try to recover points on the original images to prove that um, in fact this approach can can improve the number of um, of detected points beyond the artificial um, examples. Uh, the data set we used was prepared by Logman and others. Uh, it consists of approximately 1,400 images. Uh, it contains a, a number of different uh, targets, but they all are checkerboards, but they have um, different setups. Um, more data was collected, but the, uh, the current implementation is for the checkerboard, but as soon as the feature detection step could support others, uh, the, uh, the whole pipeline should work with any type of board as soon as we know how to impute uh, the missing points, missing corners. 
Um, standard with the camera collaboration, but my, the idea is to show that this the two-step camera collaboration actually improves the um, the reprojection error or the the accuracy. And you can see that uh, on the initial collaboration, a lot of points um, for a lot of, a lot of images I couldn't even I calculate the reprojection error. The cause of that is um, the fact that the um, the starting model requires root finding. You can find that in supplementary materials, and sometimes the root cannot be found, which means that the um, camera parameters are off a, a lot. So they, it's all such that it's um, it's not even possible to find the root. Um, then the uh, you, you can see the amount of um, images where the reprojection error is uh, greater than. Uh, than 10 and uh, for um, images where the web projection is smaller than 10, I assume that is correctly detected, but you can see the history around that. You can see that um, on the final after the final collaboration have a lot more um, good um, good images in which the projection error is small, and also the decrease of the images where uh, you couldn't uh, do perform the root finding, meaning that the um, the quality of the uh, camera counters improves. Uh, that's the uh, histograms of, um, it actually comes from the previous image, and that's the histograms of the camera vibrations on the, after the first step and the second step, where the reprojection error is below 10. And you can see that after the second step, often we have the uh, reprojection error on the sub pixel level. Uh, which is um, that's not state of the art. It's not the goal of this um, work, but nevertheless, that's really impressive. And that's required for uh, the accurate positions of these possible locations of uh, priests and common corners. Uh, now, going to the additional feature detection. On the right, you can see the original uh, board of the detected points and the imputed file. On the left, you can see the um, the board, and you can observe how these additional points they vary similarly to how the um, the board itself is worked. And, and you can see that you can see, uh, for example, here and a little bit like here, there are um, some points which were not previously detected. Those are uh, two positives, but right now we're not speaking about filtering them out. You can see the possible positions where we expect additional corners uh, to be. Now, for the classification, as I said, we tried two methods, and you can see that the cache response does not create the, um, the high output near the edges, which is the expected result, and the um, approach proposed by Charger, and others does that, and we end with the cache response, which worked um, quite good. Now going to the evaluation, first of all, artificially moved points. We removed 20% of the points and we try to uh, recover that on the top histogram. Um, you can see the histogram of number of the points after this um, after this removal. And at the bottom, you can see the number of uh, points uh, improved greatly. Here, the green points are such that uh, were artificially removed and recovered. Red ones are points out of the image, and orange ones are false positives. You can see that the classifier works rather well. Uh, then we added the artificial occlusion, which typically uh, fails the feature detection. You can see that the, the number of uh, detected points improves as well. Here's the example. You can see that near the joints of the squid, the feature detection failed to detect. Uh, the point because it's close to this occlusion, but our method could uh, initially could find uh, these points which uh, were hard to, uh, to find for the previous approach. Now, the real data you can clearly see green points which are uh, newly found um, points which were not detected previously as well as here, but uh, sometimes there are that's the limitation of the current model. These green points are actually false positives, but they were not detected at the site because at that point there is actually a sub point, um, but it does not go to these points. And that's the histogram of the amount of 
newly detected point, you can see that uh, actually there is a quite large number of points which were newly detected and here the comparison of our approach with others, our approach does not require the board's shape, for example, the occlusion, and uh, it supports the model-based and geometry-based um, recreation of these features. Going to conclusions, uh, we propose a model-based approach to detect previous unfound features and the classifier which can uh, reject false politics quite um, successfully. And also we show that the approach uh, actually succeeded in finding or previously undetected features which uh, say that there are some and there is actually needs of the data. Um, and a little bit about the reviewers' comments, let's so start with that no comparison was made to classical camera collaboration. The main contribution of this work is feature detection step. Although the model uh, proposes the uh, camera parameters, the are state of the art, and the user is encouraged to pass the found features into any uh, camera collaboration to chain to obtain uh, camera collaboration. The literature review does not include the review of method with all the feature detection step in a different way. The review contains the feature detection method and compares to them, but the specifics of task of model based approach is small. To, uh, it's not big enough to uh, add a separate uh, subsection. However, we will be talking about a paper which has that. With my general work diagram of the algorithm, that's um, subjection, in my opinion, I think that it's similar to the least works. Uh, but uh, good, but uh, here's the work diagram nonetheless. Uh, next one is that it is not sufficient, sufficiently described what results are obtained on test sets, as this um, work does not concern the learning phase. There is uh, no need to split the data set and to train and test sets. Um, and also, we, uh, the, the, the data set itself did not contain the ground truth scanner operations. Uh, the question, the research questions were not explicitly answered, and I just that in the section conclusions where I address them. Uh, a comparison of the result with other feature detection methods has not been made, and I created a feature wide comparison to the state of the art methods and numerical comparison to the LPC detect method. It would be great to compare the type of color, which does uh, what, what's the closest to what. I've done, but this method currently supports only eight of grid boards. We are working with the checker board, uh, hence, uh, it's not possible to compare those data. Um, thank you for your time, and uh, please go ahead if you have any questions. I have, I have one philosophical question. I don't understand the aim of the thesis because if it is just to recover some extra features with the checkerboard to uh, improve camera and camera consideration, uh, that's one. But you say that you can use that to to you to uh, calibrate other cameras. How can you do that? Could you elaborate on? Yeah, look, 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 you can only impute the uh, missed feature features on the image if you calibrate the camera and find these details of the model. But if you have another a picture taken by another camera, you can't use that imputed uh, in, uh, point because it's in different different picture taken by a different camera. Um, yes. So the point is that uh, this point. Usually, typically, the points which are not detected are the application with the open image where the distortion is the most severe. And uh, this point provide more information about the distortion. And uh, we use the intermediate camera preparation to find those uh, points which will allow us to uh, do add more constraints to the camera preparation uh, pipeline. And typically, for each camera, this camera preparation process is run. Um, again, and again, separately for um, for each camera. So you have to do that, um, as I said, separately for each camera. But the uh, expectation is to add additional constraints uh, with more interesting points. Uh, because on, on some of your slides, number nine, probably you said that this can be used to for calibration process in for other cameras. Um, yeah, that's that's other. Uh, that. 
that far, uh, right? It was in your presentation. It's not very it might be that I thought that we can use it. It's just in Britain, but not just in Italy. Uh, it might be that uh, it's said here that we can use this to find each uh, kind of coordinates to enlarge them into a separate uh, camera collaboration tool chain. That means that we perform this model based feature detection step to obtain as many features as we can, and then we pass that to the state of the art camera collaboration tool chain to use those additional points that are in the Another question is, uh, is the reprojection error a good measure for quality of camera footage? Yes, it also includes uh, a, a correct estimation of these extrinsics. Rotation uh, metrics are translation vector T. So, how can you measure quality of camera calibration using the rejection error? Uh, right, so the camera calibration actually um, consists of these three. Um, you can separate them, but uh, three steps, which or three groups of parameters, extrinsic distortion and intrinsic, and this reprojection error, right? It, it uh, estimates the error for all of these features combined. It's, I, I don't know of a way, and there is no uh my best knowledge in literature to estimate it separately you can uh, you can do that for uh various um positions of the camera and then try to generalize on that but in general the reproduction error is uh, is the method that is uh, typically used in the research to estimate the quality of the camera conversion because as i said you Typically, it does not be ground to it because that's, that's the parameters of the model. What they will. Yeah, yeah, but in your research, the main, uh, main um, um, essential problem is with these uh, distortion models. And actually, the most important thing, and as you mentioned, with these uh, great distortion near edges, near corners, it's due to to distortion model of the of, of, of the camera. Yes. So that's the main, uh, probably the, the most important uh, task is to make these parameters not just intrinsics and extrinsics. Um, well, I would kind of argue that because in my opinion, all of the parameters are equally important. You cannot say that it's the. But, but, but listen, those are much easier. Yes. So and, it, and that's why I say this is the most essential <laughs> task for you. Yes, the point is that. Uh, if the distortion is medium or uh, low, then other feature detections they work well. There is they uh, detect most of the points, and there's not much room for improvement. It's as you saw on the first image with these um, zoomed um, squares, which do not look like squares. That's where the typical state of the art approaches fail, and that's where uh, there is a room for improvement. Hence, I focus on that because. If the instruction follow, there is not much to be uh, um, on top of what's what have been done uh, previously. Mm -hmm. And then uh, yet another question: uh, Your process is iterative, so you uh, first, firstly you uh, estimate the camera calibration, so make some estimation, and then you use this estimated uh, uh, camera model to input or detect the missing points and then rerun again the process. But if you just rerun the process again without imputing, having computed these extra points, you can also improve the, 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 the result. Um, well, isn't it that if I rerun the camera progression the same, would I would get the same output? No, because you, you start with not with black or uh, white or yes, you, you know your approximation of the model. So you can use this approximation to improve. But, but then I want to, if I want that more constraints, then I can claim that the model has already converged. There is um, not much room for improvement. And these new constraints, that's what uh, should allow for a more quality. And uh, uh, I disagree because it's a non linear especially with the distortion model, you need good approximation. You, you don't solve it explicitly. You, you you do have approximation and therefore good initial approximation already improves the next step. Yeah, right. As you saw, um, I, I have a 
<laughs> what they are after that. The first uh, step of the configuration is the uh, solver, which was proposed by uh, Samuel and others to initialize the camera parameters. Some of them, you can see that there is no intrinsic magic, and then you do the optimization to uh, optimize that to, to the best of my um, ability. Hence, hence, that part is actually iterative. And this work will be good enough um, uh, approximation of the camera parameters. Case. Um, and currently, the current implementation is not, the whole pipeline is not iterative, but as you saw, we talked in Palo, uh, they do that uh, iteratively in fact, and you can do that as well. Uh, as we got more uh, points, we can uh, repeat that, but uh, the goal of the current research was to um, to show that it's possible to find points which were previously undetected uh, and to filter out the uh, false positives. Then we can, as I said, pass that into a state of the art kind of a chain, which you can pass it here and, and see what happens. But the goal of the research was to um, recover um, additional points. What are those points? Yes, the points were pointed, but they are. Um, and, uh, okay, that's that's not the good. Uh, let's see here. I see the orange points. Um, I, as I said, I extended the board by one rolling call and uh, where there are orange points, there could be corners if the board was extended, but there are no, um, no, no points. And these are false positives, like no for on this point. Yes, uh, there could be corners, but then um, we have to check whether there is um, a corner or not. As you see at the top, uh, where there are red points, these points are beyond the image. There, there can't be any points, and hence we have to filter out the false positives, but the green ones are the um, true positives. That's the uh, corners which were not previously detected, but our approach um, could. The fact that and they are too positive. There's um, actually a, a form. But wouldn't these false positives improve the model because they practically fit? They increase the number of uh, points that are very well matched to the model. Yes. So you yes, in fact, imagine that we extended the, the checkerboard by one and fold, and you'll get those points, which are very seems very well well. That they, so why why not? Because um, actually there is uh, no no chapter. there is there is no um, corners in real life and I I can't say that um, arbitrarily here to be corner and here to be corner as well and and put that but the point is to get real. Uh, but but how do you how do you check that you just one should look and manually. Verify that the green point is green and say uh, orange is orange. So or what? The point, the color of the point uh, was tied up to the classification, which I could, could, could test that. Uh, my classification step where we use the hash and this one. Look, here you can see um, the, the part of the image, and here the color, here the color, here the color, here the color as well. Here you can see the better response, and where the problem is, there is actually the higher response. And we also compare with the operated by character and others. And we see that as well. Here's the problem, here's the problem, very nice, uh, I presented here as well. That could be a good measure, but here you can see that on the end is the response to high well. And uh, that was the problem because we enabled um, possible corners near the edge as two positives, and it's not the case, there's no more than has been, uh, and with the hash and response, which um, works as a um, as well. For as I said, we use the RC curve and uh, maximize the geometric need for um, for uh, finding the threshold. Actually, if you're interested, we use small area near the real world corners, even if we um, Estimated this response for the um, whole image, we would have too many of the uh, false um, measurements, and this would lead to very um, optimistic classifier because if so, so many uh, trivial the uh, false positives that it would say that this is the one as well, but it's a little bit rough as we went uh, with that search. Say I'm not uh, can revert to this orange pixel. I'm not looking at this. 
Diffuse, uh, yeah. uh, if you you have not this short white uh, lines, uh, like the, it seems like the next cell, ne next uh, the same cell. Yeah. Yes. 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 It is the uh, red part, meaning that here the reason for the because uh, too black. Um, for the too black, the like, edges and two white edges here, there's no white edge. It's uh, completely black. There is no um, corner here. We say we extend the word because we think that there are two different. We could do that all the way here, but uh, here we don't have any so we should not uh, label them as too much because that's, that's, that's not the case. Okay, but in this case, you just put. Cut uh, the final edge, and you will have no. It's the whole. Um, yes, but it might be the case that um, I'm not sure that if oh right, let me show. I have an example that put here. Um, these are the points which were protected mm -hmm. initially. Then I extend the board, and it turns out that uh, when I extend the board, there are, are um, two positives. These ones were uh, accepted as um, two positives and. You can see that uh, by this part, there is actually a real world corner which was not detected previously by um, previous side. Am I right to understand that uh, from the whole world, like uh, the half of percent uh, barely like undone, and uh, this uh, made uh, a big discussion now, but really it's not such a huge problem if we finalize this? Uh, um, well, I can argue that, so let's say that. It's um, these things are used to map the point of image to the real world. And let's say, let's say that uh, we want to train a robot which would um, type or which would draft something. And you have to uh, be able to identify the three position of that, the high position for that, you need that. And speaking about the white uh images or the cameras, they are widely used in GoPros, mobile, mobile phones, drones. Uh, as well to observe as much of this space as possible, but uh, for them the camera integration process is uh, is more complex. Uh, uh, just uh, can you show the piece of round? I uh, we can you explain a what has been bad value of course. Uh, well, it depends here. Um, that's the number of um. Yeah, that's the number of points before refinement. We have a certain number of uh, images. Yeah, I know. Frequency is the number of points. Frequency is the number of images with this number of points detected. Oh, what 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 the meaning? Out of what? Did you did you did you calculate some like F four or precision or because? It seems that this histogram should tell us something about how good you are with it. But uh, as I said, uh, there is no graphic, so I do not know beforehand number of points, but I may relate to them and uh, we did not have such capacity. So, what information do we get from the extra number of points? We don't know how many of them are there. You can see that the uh, number of the points includes, and then there is the example of such points, and you can see that. Uh, the three points, those are uh, two positives, meaning that uh, we do not feel like when you, sorry, when you remove points manually, you know where they advise it. So you can actually test uh, how many of them you record and calculate usual advance for. So if, if you, if that's a good point, if, if you combine your findings in one histogram, there is a picture with just 10 points and you recover extra two, that's a good improvement. Uh, I mean, if there are only 12 and you recover two missing, mm -hmm. so you, you got 10 and you, uh, you know, after your algorithm, you recovered two more. This is a very good performance. And then, if you have a thousand and you find one hundred extra, it will not be a good. So, how can you combine two and one hundred with one histogram? Well, um, that could be another way of measuring that. Uh, arguably, well, I I would agree that uh, if I normalize that uh, and give the percentage, there can 
Well, assuming that the initial uh, feature detection was good, which is the case, um, I could have used the normalized percentage. Yeah, here it's uh, absolute frequency, unfortunately, uh, and I did not do the normalized um, percentage of the developments. Uh, you said at the very beginning that uh, you have these uh, how many metrics uh, aged due to the cop planner? So, if you have no planner points, you don't have aged. No, really, because then the metrics would be um, since we have uh, a factor of four points because it's um, uh, a homogeneous point in the world, then the uh, metrics which would map it, it would be three by four. Yes. But it's three by four metrics. And you said that you have H due to the complementarity of your points. You always have H, but it's a different side. But, but it would uh, not map the point. It, the the exchange uh, parameters it maps points from uh, 3D world to 2D world. And it's not a homography because then we need to change this. But if we think that the um, the this feature for this planner, which is the case, then it uh, you can only make one row. You can see that on the second column on the left um, half, and then this um, matrix it becomes three by three, which is um, a homology because it maps the point from the uh, space with the same number of uh, dimensions, and it's also um, simplifies life. Yeah, but just simplification, you have uh, you have uh, one uh, parameter fix, and that's why it reduces the number mm -hmm. of features. Right, and and hence it becomes uh, square matrix, and and hence we can easily um, we can invert it easier uh, for vector detection than if it had been uh, not square. And the very last question: What for did you give us these things? What, sir? What for did you give us these things? Uh, I think we pointed that I have this all in the presentation. You don't have nothing. You, you don't have this presentation. I have very general problem without I have any case. So what for? I had some of these in the presentation, but then uh, Alex recommended me to uh, remove this uh, thirty uh, slide with the map and provide it as a printed material. Uh, and focus on uh, on the high level uh, detail, but uh, you will be able to. <laughs> yeah, you will be able to go into detail if you would like to, but I have not part of the slides because there are like big five of them already, and um, it, it might be a little bit. I I, I should have spoken faster than, and I doubt that I can do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, this slide we include the camera model with a two view of this formula uh, k times uh, f of h etc. and the derivation of that and the uh, solvers which were proposed by the experiments and others and the derivation of that. I did a lot of that. Um, it, it took a lot of time, but right, I, I don't think that I can um, show all of that uh, on this slide. Although I would like to. The no, last question is, if, as I understand, this is your joint work with uh, the experience. The question is, what is your specific bar for this work? Um, everything I did. Well, uh, James Briggs, uh, first of all, helped me with certain theory which I did not uh, understand. Um, and also the general idea of using the words geometry. I was thinking, but I did all the coding and all the math derivations myself on the experiment. Uh, but I, I cannot underestimate uh, its help. The, um, well, the reason was that you um, got two authors in the front of the title page. If you go to the first page, there are two authors. Mm -hmm. You don't say that uh, James Fritz was your supervisor, you just put two names. That's probably because uh, yes, so this, yes, because as I said, this will be for this uh, uh, the paper in some journal. I yes, and uh, yeah. on all uh, contemporary conferences, uh, this like requirement, these are only authors, 
who put a pretty huge, huge uh, commitment uh, to this material. Not himself, not the material, not to the task, but uh, put a huge part of this material and you could do a huge contribution. Well, I could, have, could not have done this uh, without him. Well, the, I, I did uh, like most of the manual work and it is in part of um, like smart work, but he provided me with the essentials, the idea and certain guidance uh, when I uh, tumbled upon the problems and he could not have solved them. Yeah, as I said, I could not have done this uh, without his help. Understand that.
Hello, my name is Daniel Polanko, and today I want to present to you a work uh, called Text Guided to Distributed Six Version Fiji Models. Thanks, uh, Les Patrick, CEO and founder of Dr. ACI Company, for the supervision of this text. So, uh, I will introduce uh, our proper setting, then we will review data sets available on open source, then we will review that it works. Uh, losses and metrics, which we apply in our work, and uh, proposed method with experience. And by mass with conclusions. So, uh, generative AI shows incredible results in uh, synthesis content of different modalities, like images, text, audio, and video. And diffusion models are a generative uh, model family that shows uh, great results in um, synthesis uh, audio, video, but especially in images. As they work in a pretty simple setting, they um, start with uh, some image that have noise and should predict uh, uh, noise which should be subtracted from the image to get less noisy version. Uh, they did guns uh, and genetic adversarial neural networks uh, years ago, and they have uh, really nice characteristics like uh, they are stable training, they do not have multiple access guns, they are fast to cover parameters and have huge community. Only for the past year, our community produced around 1,300 models, uh, model variations. So, can fusion be in the The short answer is yes. Uh, community shows interest to this domain and already produced some research work. And uh, they can be used in uh, different industries, but, but especially in the game industry, 3D modeling, and animation. Uh, but, can Pipelines are mostly complex or slow, as they usually do not use 3D prior to the lack of 3D data and uh, requires a lot of memory. We want to construct an efficient in, memory, in terms of memory and uh, speed pipeline that will use novel, sparse, uh, and diverse uh, 3D open and available datasets. And also, we want to propose simple but powerful pipeline, which can be um, then modified by a community. Uh, so our model will work in setting when we have text or some class table description, uh, and model will generate some certificate. Uh, we believe that a 3D space can be represented in some simpler form uh, in 2D layers that could, could be decoded back into 3D efficiently then. The hypothesis is that later state of the art, later diffusion models uh, can be utilized to conditionally synthesize 2D layer parameterization of a 3D space. Uh, we propose to use novel, large, and sparse 3D data set as a powerful model prior for understanding and generalizing in 3D space. So, in our work, we use two data sets. First one called ShapeNet. Uh, this data set contains uh, normalized line and correct in terms of geometry figures, which are divided on 35 common categories, and uh, this data set is common benchmark. We also use object data set, uh, which contains uh, 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 many figures from the wild, provided by different CD artists, and they are divided by uh, approximately 21,000 categories and contains uh, huge semantics like text and textual descriptions. Here you can see comparison of objects with other datasets and also some common categories in this uh, dataset. And here you can notice uh, uh, good semantic information about uh, one data sample from this dataset. We divided all the prior work on uh, three major streams. First one is using the diffusion model as a prior. Uh, here, authors propose to use a 2D latent diffusion model uh, with uh, some uh, 3D models like NERF. Uh, NERF is, it is uh, on a high level, it is a simple model that takes uh, camera parameters in, as an input and returns a GPU value. And 2D latent diffusion model guides this model how to uh, synthesize uh, uh, 3D content. So uh, we don't focus on this, uh, but uh, I need to mention that uh, uh, a big advantage of uh, such a client is that you don't need to train a custom validation model. Uh, you can reuse uh, uh, already a uh, green model from the community, and um, 
And the main disadvantage is that it really slow in conversions. Uh, for example, for one text prompt, uh, it uh, can be 12 hours to achieve some results. Uh, second stream uh, is about conversion studio representations. Uh, authors propose to project um, uh, so, the figure on uh, three orthogonal cross, cross planes uh, follow the three plane, and then we put uh, a figure of, of this plane back to the three. And the idea is that you uh, take each uh, point of the figure, you find the total projection on each of these uh, three planes. On um, each plane, you sample uh, by this uh, uh, coordinates some pitch and padding, and then and then you pass uh, um, this padding through a frequency network, and this network uh, returns value. Does this point belong to this three D figure or not? And uh, uh, that's it. Uh, and they propose also to generalize over these three planes uh, with some division model, and uh, yeah. What we propose to use, we propose to, uh, first of all, use latest exact latent diffusion models instead of for previous old variants that uh, were used here. We also propose to uh, use a bigger data set uh, because of authors. In, in this work, authors propose to train on shape. We propose uh, we can continue on objectives. And also, authors uh, use occupancy network. That means that you should uh, sample a really big amount of points in space to find uh, uh, the figure surface. We propose to use uh, scientist function as a narrow field of the figure. So, first stream uh, is about uh, 3D economical 3D division models. Uh, I just say shortly that they usually require a lot of memory. Uh, because they usually start from uh, many uh, models. Here you can see a uh, 2D pretend model with uh, uh, added uh, 3D uh, model. And uh, usually, uh, yeah, they require a lot of Okay. So, 2D plus one more dimension is not easy because in 3D we have different figure representations like uh, box grids, point cloud, meshes, and MPC fields. We mainly focus on point clouds and because it's like trade off between uh, uh, a, a figure representation complexity and uh, uh, detectation. To compare the two point clouds, we use uh, chamber distance loss. Uh, this loss populated uh, that you uh, for each point in a point cloud, uh, in the first point cloud, you will find the nearest point in the second point cloud. And vice versa, you take all these uh, distances and sum them up again, and uh, this is your loss. Basically, MCC means greater between uh, two point clouds. We also use semantic for the metric losses. And for semantic loss, we uh, render uh, ground truth and predicted the point cloud, and then we evaluate the grid model on uh, each renders. We retrieve semantic invariance and calculate the mixture error between them. And uh, we also talk about the square there between uh, two renders to achieve the uh, To be comparable with uh, other models, we propose to use virtual inception distance uh, or FAT. Uh, it basically compares to uh, distribu distributions. On a higher level, uh, they evaluate inception with three models on uh, renders from 20 different sides of each. Um, uh, mesh in our uh, uh, predicted data set and the ground truth data set. And then they calculate distribution uh, characteristics like uh, trace of covariant matrices and means. And uh, after that, they uh, calculate the field. So we use subsample of ShameNet called ShameNet Forum. It contains 31,000 of CD objects and divided by 55 categories as a primary data set. We also sampled around 100,000 of objects from contributors, and uh, we use them for model retraining. Uh, for each 3D figure, we uniformly uh, sample around a couple of million points in the space and on the figure. And then for each uh, point uh, in the space, we uh, find the closest point on the figure and calculate the distance. 
А, за единствените с вестови абсолютно промежни е пала в сайн дистанс фанкшн. Сайн дистанс фанкшн и математика фанкшн за дейс среди поинт и спейс за инпут и ретурнс дистанс за сайклоз цирпис. И в поинт инсайд промеж е ретурнс на гете байдер. So, um, our goal, and here is our uh, first model plan. Our goal is to achieve three plane for each figure in our data set. So, uh, for each figure, we initialize, we randomly initialize uh, three plane. We also initialize some random point cloud in space, in normalized space, and then we uh, project each point on uh, uh, three orthogonal cross planes. Uh, we sample by this coordinates some, some feature embeddings. We aggregate them and pass through uh, the largest on SDF uh, network. Uh, this network uh, returns up as offset and direction in which direction we should move for a uh, point towards the geometry. Uh, we basically overfit a uh, tree plane for each figure in our data set, but the quarter is uh, staying stay the same for all. And F child awaits. Here you can see an example of a geometry plane which you read. Uh, here uh, you can also expect a uh, projected uh, geometry pairs. And uh, I need to mention here is that uh, this is not an unusual image, and uh, it is like some sort of a deep uh, like representation of the figure. Uh, on this slide, uh, you can notice optimal parameters of our uh, plane model. We based our parameter search on uh, two major works. Uh, first one called Indirect. Others uh, also propose to use uh, three planes to uh, bake in uh, a 3D scene. And uh, real fields, uh, we use uh, real fields to uh, get insights about how to aggregate efficient weightings after uh, three planes. Uh, the diffusion model is our second component. Uh, it, uh, we basically adapt uh, a classic Latin diffusion model to work with uh, three planes instead of uh, canonical image space. Uh, this model contains uh, two major components. Uh, first one called the variational autoencoder, and the second one is dynamic. Variational autoencoder takes um, uh, three planes as an input and uh, projects uh, this three plane into a more compressed uh, form like space in which uh, the unit learns how to. Uh, the noise and synthesize the novel uh, three plans. Um, yeah. And here you can uh, see uh, a diffusion reverse path. We start from uh, a random Russian noise and uh, sequentially the noise uh, to plan to recognize some CD patterns. Uh, and finally, our visual results. Uh, so, uh, on this slide, uh, you can see that we we take a ground point cloud, uh, we project it on a tree plane, and go to this Y to some latent error stage, and uh, it iteratively adds some months, and then we put back with the ones on the steps. Uh, you can notice that our results are uh, uh, a bit noisy. Uh, on our side, uh, generated and synthesized uh, objects by our model. Uh, Lower uh, is uh, ground truth objects. More formal results. Uh, we beat some uh, baselines, but we still far away from uh, current state of the models. Uh, actually, we suppose that uh, because uh, we generated all our three planes uh, not from one prior distribution, so it maybe would be better to use uh, shared. Uh, uh, 3D operational autoencoder to uh, to learn how to project uh, 3D figures on three planes. So in this work, we introduced the uh, approach of using three plane compressed representations to parameterize uh, the implicit signs and functions. We also suggested the application of the latest state of the art uh, 2D latent diffusion models to synthesize the plane parameterization of the space. And uh, we also propose uh, to use uh, a new object data set, uh, which contains um, uh, from the files in the figures 
as a primary information for models. Uh, for the future steps, uh, we plan to use our model uh, in text guided to generation, generation of format. Uh, currently, we use the clip on guidance on, on text, but uh, we use only labels and text. Uh, also, uh, to get uh, more fine results, uh, it uh, proposed to uh, fine tune all our checkpoint on object results. Uh, and as I mentioned, mentioned earlier, uh, the point of three planes could be significantly improved with uh, brain 3D variation of encoder. And uh, despite the complexity in preparing information about order and normals, we could add some information uh, to the model about geometric details of figure. And lastly, we will be investigating methods uh, for converting point cloud to meshes uh, and use in the computer uh, graphic industry. So thank you for your attention. Your questions. Uh, in the cases of this work, um, I was in the uh, industry of working with graphics. Uh, actually, this uh, work will be used in uh, CG modeling and also for uh, synthesis of model to be figures for the industry. Um, in the industry primarily? Primary game industry, yes, but also just for CG uh, analysis. The okay, second question is um, why exactly this kind of models have you compared with other um, models and uh, why have you selected the method that you supervise or who selected the uh, different uh, models? Uh, yeah, uh, we selected these models because they don't uh, so. Results in a computer and modalities over the past part of the And uh, yeah, we took this network uh, because uh, it uh, turned out shows promising results among the only included by all the same uh, as you mentioned in uh, this work. Uh, good results from comparing to? Uh, good results uh, in terms of. Uh, Quantum quality mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, in visual and semantic quality, uh, which we measured by uh, some models like clip, for example, or once again, measure it by how how it is quality. Uh, you, you can measure uh, uh, quality of for generated content uh, by collecting uh, some linear networks which gives uh, some information. For example, we can render um utility figure and uh, evaluate the clip model to achieve some experience. Uh -huh. Okay, and the simple question and the simple question how they uh understood the results of the um There are two questions. How to measure the quality of results, uh, which method, yes? Mm -hmm. And second, uh, it depends on the first answer. So how to understand this is really good uh, quality. Uh, you can measure the uh, quality of actual uh, results by evaluating FADA method uh, with uh, round to state of uh, achieved uh, from uh, real city practice. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can compare distribution, uh, the synthetic distribution with um, uh, real life distribution data. 
manually, manually for 58 images. Um, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, kind of how would you get the, the, the to have an automated way to measure the distance between the ground truth and uh, the synthesized image? Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, we so prefer to do it with your own eyes, just sitting days and weeks and years. No, 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 no. As I mentioned before, mm -hmm. you uh, take all your synthesized uh, figure for uh, a predefined part. For example, in uh, this board, we rendered the chair tables mm -hmm. uh, boxes, and uh, you synthesize, for, for example, 5,000 elements for each piece. Uh, then you render the so material development button from 20 different sites. And you uh, estimate uh, this uh, invariance with section with the uh, neural network. And now you have a uh, uh, set of invariance for your synthetic content. Then you uh, calculate the same invariance in the same process for. Uh, ground truth data set also on plotted on, on both on the same boxes like right? shared containers. And now you have like two different sets of conveyance. You calculate as your distribution uh, properties like mean and variances. And uh, by this metric, you can uh, uh, you can say if uh data distribution are close enough to realize. This is a very, very clever explanation that I have already had. Uh, for uh, such <clears throat> no specialist guys, maybe you can say to each other, I'm told you, if you can look at my style, uh, could you please do it in one sentence and uh, using simple words? Yeah. That will definitely make us very happy. You could say similar in yeah. general, compare, and you compare synthesis and real life uh, statistical distributions of data. Mm -hmm. And if your synthesis distribution is wide enough to real life, you can say that you are good enough in uh, similar quantum uh, velocity. To have an algorithmic mean to compare this real life and synthesized, or you do that with your own eyes? Uh, you compare with uh, some formula, uh, not just. Uh, to that in the presentation? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so, so, this is the way to learn how to do Thank you. Much better. Mm -hmm. uh, one question: As far as I understand, the uh, models they are mostly they are mostly um, uh, most useful if they uh, are given in the wider range of estimation. Uh, not mass of points, not cloud of points, but uh, like uh, surfaces with three points or maybe more. And uh, then you can use this model much easier uh, and wider with different applications and so on. But can you understand right? Uh, you speak about just uh, cloud of points. No? Yes, the uh, magic focus on one part. And but uh, as we mentioned in uh, official studies, so we want to do research and uh, different uh, uh, approaches how to ignore the form of this mesh. Uh, actually, there is an uh, approach to do that, and uh, we need it, but uh, we notice uh, poor results uh, where our form of is ignored. So uh, we first need to improve for the uh, Point of the symptoms, and then we can continue to use the conversion point of the mesh. Now it's a real time. And my point is uh, maybe in this way, if this is your goal, to find um, like surface covering of your model, 
uh, doing my queries, but with my query, but um, better would be to change the approach because uh, the other approach you may not find better um, like coverage by surfaces because again you need to like take into account that uh, surfaces like so you, you you will try to find this kind of but uh, your cloud I think we understand will give you a very rough result or not not with the smooth sky uh, uh, absolutely uh, 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 point uh we should research uh information but but uh as I mentioned all the in the future text it um Maybe it's beneficial to incorporate information about if it's normal, if it's normal, if it's normal uh, can give an information about how the service uh, should be more to and et etc. Uh, and the three planes are good enough for this uh, task because they uh, can incorporate in zero latency the station information about four and normal. So uh, we uh, uh, we plan to improve it so this uh, uh, normal information in the future, but now it's only uh, that information. If I'm mistaken, the speaker at the time will be talked about it to do some things similar to the present. Did you try it? I know that they work with uh, uh, ethics for uh, different game engines, uh, but uh, we uh, uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe it's uh, it's very really good point for us to learn about uh, my question is: uh, Can you try uh, some uh, application of your method to like not yet? Not yet. Okay. 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 Create new samples by the noise. You usually uh, generate many samples and then you choose the global to the target factor. Yes. What is the target factor in your case? And if you consider usual set of diffusion, you usually have all. Yes. And you try to uh, get closer to this point. What is the problem in your case or for some vector? Apparently, uh, we also use the components as the data uh, but uh, we avoid uh, this uh, not on the desktop from the other set, we avoid the on the flat labels and text, uh, text from uh, our address. So, basically, this model uh, can be improved uh, with some. Uh, you specify uh, generate something from this class, like a thumb here. Uh, Actually, in training our work, we just define the uh, dictionary with uh, uh, all plus labels that we have in text, and uh, for each text, we have a uh, little value to not evaluate uh, it many times to make the uh, training process much more faster. But, uh, yeah. but my question is that uh, if a uh, model will generate different, yeah, different uh, uh, members of the same class. How it will affect the dispatch hang in section distance? Would be different uh, low cloud, point of cloud to different shares? Uh, yes, so it will be a different point cloud for different shares. And uh, but when you when you measure this matrix, you measure this target cloud and the result. Yeah, uh, we have uh, a model to generate the shares with different times. So we generate, for example, 5,000. Uh, shares and uh, we also uh, take uh, million new shares. And if, if our model is uh, too overfitted, for example, on one pair form, uh, our metric will be high enough because uh, our distribution is not a high level, it doesn't have a high variance, so uh, the metric will be high. Yeah. Specifically, like uh, you mm -hmm. uh, want. That model would generate 5,000 detailed shares, and this metric would be best. 
not the same different shares. Yes, our objective is that the model should generate 5,000 different shares to cover all the uh, shares mine hold. Okay. Um, so you take uh, like max B or something? Uh, in this formula, you can notice that we compare uh, the covariance, uh, we compare the covariance of our share, uh, of our predicted shares with the uh, ground truth shares. Uh, so, but you have many ground truth shares, and yeah. anything samples. Yeah. Uh, I mean, here is 5 from 1 to 20, and uh, in some dimensions, yeah. Uh, uh, I can explain for one thing. Uh, the idea is that we can uh, synthesize, uh, for example, we synthesize 5,000 point bar for carry loss. And we also have 5,000 shares in the ground to say. Uh, then we render each of these point bar uh, from 20 different sites. Because it's completely, then we should move it in a distance. Uh, we render it from 20 different sites. And for, then, for first, for first generated sample. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. For first generated sample, we render it from 20 different sites. Uh, so we have now 20 images for one no, synthetic sample. Then we evaluate the conception of the USB model. On, on each of this thing. This model is basically like it's kind of it returns some embedded, some or better representation of this uh, image. And now we have 20 uh, embeddings for each uh, figure. So we end up with uh, uh, 25,000 of embeddings for uh, predicted data and for ground data. And now we can uh, calculate zero uh, variances and uh, zero means. Uh, uh, this is common metric for this unit and not uh, only in strictly synthesis, but mostly in uh, uh, synthesis to be one of the wider models in computational models. Because you don't have uh, another method to uh, compare uh, two distributions, especially when you work with generic model, which uh, where you don't have. Uh, no, but I can understand if you generate image and you have embedding for prompt, the user you can compare an image and prompt and say they are flowed or. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but you compare not not sample in the ground because you compare uh, distribution of sample and distribution of ground. Yeah. 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 No. Maybe uh, I think it makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, no, I wonder what does the input. Text to talk about the like that. But what is, how does the reading the text, which we use as reading the look like? Is it a natural language text? Is it a structured text? How does it look like? Do you have an example? Uh, on this presentation, I don't that. Uh, actually, explain. Hmm? Please explain. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, we do not really use okay, general text. We only use uh, tags and uh, we use uh, class labels from our data set. But we uh, retrieve uh, embeddings uh, from this uh, uh, text in the same way as uh, embeddings could be retrieved from a general text. So, uh, uh, ask me on your question is that we don't have a uh, general uh, uh, scene description like uh, you know, a big table with important order. Uh, no, we have just a table, and uh, we have uh, a grid model on this text to achieve embedding, which, which is in addition to our model. Uh, to make it fully and, uh, uh, yeah, to make it fully text guided, 
um, we should to uh, continue training our model on full computer data set and on text to uh, to figure layers. Mm -hmm. So this is what you propose to do this. Yeah, for now it uh, requires a uh, uh, enormous amount of resources to train such model. Uh, so this model is uh, uh, this architecture uh, fully supports uh, text guidance, but uh, we uh, we use it because uh, yeah, to use our training in language. Okay. I think that was actually a question of your reviewer uh, suggestion that you have like, have a whole picture which shows different uh, stages from input text and yes. uh, so this is part of the experiment. So, yeah, it was not, you, you were unable to create uh, the whole pipeline. I tried to visualize it, but it's really hard to uh, place all non components on the one second slide. That's why I was broken by uh, on two parts. Yeah, but I mean, but you mentioned that uh, you do you have this component uh, input when you process text? Or you just give um, like simple words? No, there's no one to just say. Use text. Yeah, yeah. 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 Input is a set of text. Uh, this input is a set of text. Not a set of text, one text. One text. Yeah, for for model, it is one text. Uh, I mean, for one video, it is one text. Not a set. Uh, yeah, not a set. So you can have a round table and you can do it. Uh, yes. You, you can have it. That's only a no way to work. No way to ask for children there. <laughs> Actually, we uh, did not experiment with that, but I think that, that it would be a nice experiment to try uh, uh, two different uh, prompts, like the uh, yeah, like you mentioned. And then, uh, for example, average of the uh, uh, average is your embeds and other model. We didn't try it, but. So, but what do you need to extend from one to many texts as an input? Uh, kind of uh, current architecture exports, uh, uh, we can use a uh, function for, we can use a map method, uh, so, but uh, yeah, can't we do So, uh, mechanics is over there? But yes, yes, yes. Okay. And you also mentioned time issues in one of the, uh, of the models. Uh, that's not a question here because it's you know, not uh, uh, I once it is trained, it is already. Yeah, uh, about uh, if, if you talk about our model or no, no, you mentioned at the very beginning that it's for some model it takes like 12 hours, yes, yeah. for rendering or generating one figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's, that's why this model is the uh, near from. Uh, that model and we have usually uh, takes a little of time to converge. And uh, here is a uh, figure not that uh, it is not a one shot generation. Uh, authors propose to feed small model to the best figure because they, they fade in uh, uh, how CG uh, CGCM uh, CG looks like in model weights. You don't have such an issue here because yes, the uh, main I problem is to train the model, and after that, this yeah. generated. I also mentioned that uh, our model works uh, uh, to think that's one figure, it takes around uh, 40 seconds uh, on uh, uh, T4 uh, meter to be defined. So it's still something, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's still spent some time because the vision models are uh, iterative models and they. Requires time to express them. They do not like that, or well, they don't like guns. They do not work much of time. And then I have a question that the model has speeds per step, when you come to step, very limited whatever. Yeah, only plot is which you're in. Um, Parameter data set, 
And primary data set uh, contains uh, 55 years, so 55 classes. Well, you can start when you want. Okay, so I will start now. Um, yeah. Hello, I'm Kyle, and today I will present my master's thesis named Speed Activation Networks for Neural Fields that was done uh, with supervision of Les Patrick. So, this is the rough structure of the presentation. First, I will uh, try to introduce you to the domain, and after that, I like uh, the points and the search gap that can be addressed. And of that, I will come up to the experiments um, that we tried. So let's start with an abstract but strict definition of a term field. Field is a quantity that is defined for all spatial and or temporal coordinates. It is discoverable as an n-dimensional volume where for each uh, point, like varying, and for each point in this room, we have uh, some quantity of interest defined, like temperature or pressure. Well, that's very good. It's a very useful concept in classical science. But what, why, why do we care about this concept in computer science and in machine learning in particular? Uh, turns out that there are some tasks that are much easier to do when they are stated as a problem of fields modeling. For example, we will do simple stuff. It is formulated as following. Uh, we have pairs. Uh, in each pair, there is a some camera position and the corresponding bit of pixels image. And the task is for new unseen pose to synthesize the view. And it turns out that it is much easier so when we uh, model our scene as a field and model this field with a neural network. This goes like this. A neural network takes as input uh, three coordinates plus two viewing angles and returns the RGB color and density. Mm. In the inference time, this is used by the renderer to produce the final picture. And in the training time, we have much, much simpler problem for neural networks to model. And if you look uh, uh, actually at any leaderboard regarding the uh, task with Trudea, uh, it will probably that NERF models are at the top nowadays. Uh, but besides 3D, there are a lot of other applications in other areas, uh, for example, for data compression and robotics. And uh, the one application uh, that is very uh, interesting is using neural networks as a data format as uh, because in the, in the wild there are different kinds of data and even more uh, ways to store and manipulate them as uh, was mentioned in the previous presentation uh, there are plenty of ways to store 3d like meshes or point clouds and for example point clouds are really good way to uh, render the final image but are really really hard to manipulate uh, and on the other part uh, point clouds are easier fed into the machine learning uh, pipeline but uh, but are much harder and possibly to uh, use in the inference time and uh, neural fields have this potential to actually unify every data format and for example there is a recent work by define named Fanta where authors investigate the ways how we can bake every object in the weights of the neural network and use these weights in the further process. For example, in the case of the images, they overfit for every image in the data set a small neural network and use the weight of this neural network in a further downstream pipeline. Mm -hmm. So we looked at the ways why uh, neural fields are important and can be used. Um, what are the research gap there? Uh, so if we look at the modern deep learning practice as uh, stuck in different Lego blocks like linear layers, activation functions, normalization layers, tension blocks, and so on, uh, we can think how we can improve 
uh, in general, the whole approach. And one way is to improve the blocks themselves. And in this particular group, what we will do on such level, level level details of these building blocks like activation functions and weight utilization. And um, actually, in the next couple of slides, I will try to give arguments why uh, there are a lot of ideas remain unexplored. So, uh, if we start with activation functions, and uh, recent work, uh, named implicit neural representations and predictive creation functions, or uh, sinusoidal representation values, or SIRN in short, demonstrated that activation functions that are commonly used for uh, other different tasks in the head of uh, modern neural field really underperform. And authors developed uh, ways to uh, lead the performance in the neural field is these sign activations. And this tells us that uh, not really understand how um, the there is not really a solved one till the bullet for all. And the thing goes with weight utilization. And uh, here I just want to mention that uh, current approaches to utilize weights that are very crucial part of the deep learning pipeline are built on some shaky ground. They um, um, they are built on some proxy principles, like so the particular task of preserving the distribution uh, from one layer to another, or solving the ancient exploiting gradient problems. And uh, for example, the authors of the siren that introduced new activation functions really needed to go the same way. They uh, used the same principles as theoretically divide uh, how to utilize weights. So the variance of the input of variance of the activations to the built-in layer remains the same as the output uh, distribution. And this allowed us to actually uh, build custom models, uh, uh, put any number of layers and be more or less safe. But the main drawback I want to emphasize here is that um, this theoretical derivation has no really direct connection to the actual performance. And it would be nice to um, that uh, these connections are more explicit. So here comes the main part, and this is the uh, overview of the speed map. I will come back to this picture lately. Before that, I will um, explain the scope of the work. So the main uh, character there is the split net. This is architecture that was um, that, uh, found outside of this work by trial and error of the supervisor. And it showed really promising result, but uh, mm, really didn't go anywhere. Uh, and it would be nice if this idea will be published and in the future, uh, some huge transformer that will be parsing the UCU website will know that this idea was a uh, triumph at experiment at least. I will also give some speculative theoretical motivation why this architecture is plausible. And the very important part of this work is actually the evaluation of the performance of this architecture. And before that, I will uh, strictly formulate in what setting this evaluation was made. And the main part of the work was done actually in this loop of improving the performance of the architecture. And after that, uh, some experiments was made how well this performance generalized to the other settings outside of the settings we were tuned. Mm. And actually, I will start not with the split net, but with the siren, because uh, actually this is a previous work the split net is built on. And it tur turns out that mm, these uh, steps in this pipeline were much easier to uh, develop and go through with a simpler pressure and then generalize to four activation functions in the So here goes the test setup. The primary task is the neural signal representation primary images, because they are easier to experiment with and faster to train. And the generalization was tested on DCMs, audio, and video signals. In the case of images, the data set looks very simple. It is uh, mapping from XY coordinates of an image to the RGB values. And uh, the metric of interest is the quality of the reconstruction of the signal. And it is measured, measured with peak signal to noise ratio. Actually, this is a uh, uh, fancy logarithmic uh, formula of the mean squared error, the higher it is, the better, what they use in the literature. And uh, the emphasis was made on the small number of parameters, and there are reasons for that, because uh, 
uh, small neural networks have have a lot of complications in practical uh, practical cases when you want to put uh, some, for example, three ICID on on the edge device like mobile phone or VR glasses. And uh, there are these two references to the state of the world literature that mention that actually the small, like few layer perceptrons are very important, um, very important parts to play pipeline. And it would be nice if some improvement was made to improve these pipelines all at once. So here comes the experiment. And first, I uh, want to share the attempts to improve the siren performance. Siren, this is a uh, previous work with siren activations. And the weights of this network were, uh, is drafted from the uniform distributions, and the spread of the distribution in the regional world depends only on one parameter. This is n number of input units, and there are these two constants, one and six. They were derived theoretically in order to maintain these possible uh, theoretical properties. And in this experiment, they were actually replaced with parameters. And uh, the goal was to find such parameters that may be not so theoretically plausible, but uh, have better performance in terms of actual tasks. And it was actually done with a random search and on in this lightweight setting of reaching a grayscale image. And I wish the time wishes me to skip through these numbers and come up to the conclusion of this uh, chunk of work. So it was found that. It is indeed possible to fine tune the initialization, and uh, uh, it is very good, but uh, it is unknown how well initialization that was found in this particular task generalizes to, uh, first of all, other data sets in the same class of problems, uh, or how well this initialization generalizes to other uh, neural networks with different number of parameters. And it was found that in the image case, generalization was not so. Uh, prominent and is the tuning tough, but still very, uh, very good. In the case of the audio results, still we were slightly better than the baseline than the previous work, but uh, not so well generalized. In the uh, video experiment, failed uh, maybe due to the complexity of the time domain that is introduced, but uh, reasons remain unfortunately unclear. So here comes the split net. So this is. The neural architecture with four different activation functions tanh, sigmoid, sine, and cosine. So, as I mentioned before, for the scope, this remained fixed and was iterated outside. And uh, this neural network can be thought of having as four uh, computational branches. Each branch uh, has its own nonlinearity and separate uh, trainable uh, set of weights, weights to that bias. And after that, the result is multiplied. So, and uh, picture is beautiful, but why it is uh, plausible? First of all, it kind of takes both of the two worlds. Uh, first of all, it has uh, two periodic activations that may handle uh, uh, periodic patterns in the data. Also, it has gating mechanism we are multiplying by the H and sigmoid, and it can be thought, uh, jokingly, of course, as a relative, as a different relative of retention mechanism. And uh, the really uh, reasons why to go, go in this direction is because the most research is, is done in the terms of finding one which is uh, activation functions and not uh, does not look at how these nonlinearities actually in, can, in, interact with each other. And the hypothesis was that uh, such uh, nonlinear activation will, will have much capacities in some cases where capacity and small number of parameters are really important. And uh, so this is the first uh, block that was developed and added to the architecture. And the problem was evolving. And there, this plot describes how um, activations are distributed for different layers. The first column represents the siren uh, networks just for comparison. And the uh, second one is the original split net. And it can be seen that the activations are really really unhealthy and very narrow and uh, this initialization may prevent uh, 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 may restrict the capacity of the network to model the signals that uh, have much wider distributions and the simple solution that worked in practice was to uh, artificially boost these activations with a constant multiplier that is not trained uh, that is not uh, gradient propagation for them and uh, 
it was seen on the last column that this really wide in the distributions and practical results were better. I will see in the next slide. And the second component was the initialization method. Uh, I tried many methods, but uh, the process was very brittle. And the thing that actually worked is was using the layers of relation unit various initialization that was introduced in the paper all you need is a good in it. And the problem that I encountered and authors encountered it was really that. Uh, theoretical derivation for these new Lego blocks is uh, really hard. You can do it uh, once for the common nonlinearity like uh, ReLU or an age, but when you do something new, uh, you need to go through this uh, uh, formal mass, and this is very messy. And they proposed a simple idea: I just uh, scale them linearly, it uh, and do the forward batch on the uh, real data, and calculate the variances and uh, scale the weights once, and this really works well. And post network really worked well, and uh, it was uh, required some modifications because to treat each uh, activation batch separately. And uh, um, this uh, plot really shows the comparison to the baseline. Uh, two baselines was the original speed net without pushing for the activation center side, and the multiplier of activations really. Uh, improved over the baselines and the solution also improved over the baseline. Um, the second huge experiment was to try the methods that work, methods that work uh, well in, in Siren, uh, actually to uh, search over the keeper parameters of the initialization and the two parameters search there was the uh, activation range sigma uh, standard deviation that was used in the soup algorithm uh, and the least multiplier and uh, results show that uh, this uh, this experiment really does not generalize to other tasks and uh, consider it as failure. But uh, there are other two experiments that worked somehow and I want to share. First of all, is the applying this split activation to other tasks other than uh, neural field model and actually to the task of the image classification. So the simple toy uh, setting was made to test um, how well it compares to uh, the baseline activation, namely review that is uh, leaky review uh, that is commonly used today. And uh, in this setting, uh, there is, in the stable experiments are grouped by the number of parameters. And the first column uh, represents uh, the deeper parameters and the name of the experiment. And uh, it can be seen that in the low parameter setting, uh, the uh, split activations really outperform the classical approach, but uh, and uh, but in the large parameters, uh, more like that I used commonly in the big networks on the big data sets, uh, the gap uh, was uh, in the opposite way. Uh, also, the second experiment that I want to share is to apply the split activations to the sum existing pipeline. Actually, this. Uh, was tried in the top of the 3D scene reconstruction. Uh, it was done not with the particle net, but with standard app, simply for reasons because this is a more modern approach and uh, it is much faster to train. So the small uh, MLP there in this pipeline was replaced. And in this uh, table, there are two groups of experiment. The first one is the grid, and um, the top MLP fee is uh, the baseline that is used in the original pipeline. And it was replaced. It has uh, 36 thousand parameters. Was replaced with the split net with uh, somewhat smaller number, and it achieved a slightly better performance. And uh, to make sure to give more evidence that is not uh, some randomness, because this game uh, in such uh, problems is really small, uh, it was tested once again on the smaller second, and uh, the purple one and the results uh, really. Mm, agree with each other. So the gap is a summary that the gap is small, but it is here, and some improvement could really possibly be made. So, what is the summary? Uh, first of all, the main point is that uh, the new architecture was uh, introduced. It was uh, developed in some way. Uh, more particularly, uh, initialization strategy was applied to improve the performance, and there's some change uh, to boost activation so to improve performance was applied. And it was tested where this network really performs well, and it was found that it works well when the number of parameters is small. Also, the 
intended contribution of this work was that improvement of the previous work, namely Simon, uh, uh, was made, and particularly with uh, search of hyperparameters of the utilization. And uh, actually, it is even used even useful without the generalization to other tasks in the case of when you want to squeeze or the performance from the one network from the one signal. Uh, and uh, but anyway, this uh, finding had indeed some generalization capacity. And future work um, may more potential work may require uh, looking into the other methods for reading crawl health, like uh, uh, skip connections and uh, normalization methods. Advanced hyperparameter search or even neural architecture search uh, could be made. Also, it would be interesting how well uh, these uh, activations would behave in other variable settings and um, to once again look at the uh, different different uh, combination of activation functions. It would be also very interesting. So, thank you for attention and I am waiting for your challenging questions. Okay, a challenging question. Uh, have you seen the uh, remarks and written by your idea? Yeah. Could you please comment on this? Yeah, uh, the, there are a lot, a lot of uh, mistakes in the literature. Uh, so, except the cosmetic ones, there was a uh, uh, switched uh, a reference to the citation. Was uh, dissertation, but it wasn't worth. I uh, uh, fix that. The uh, fix that I provided was the testing. And uh, so the comment of the reviewer was that uh, in this data set, the particular task in the networks uh, really uh, perform much better than this 50% of the test accuracy. And uh, for that, I conducted extra experiments. To show that indeed they can achieve that, but this will come in a lot of the number of parameters. So I have made emphasis on the number of parameters of the network. Uh, else can I on the evaluation? Um, yes, so there is a statement about the limited data. Um, the evaluation is good. Um, well, I think a lot of uh, evaluations. Because of time, there are a lot of numbers uh, uh, in this diagram. Uh, yeah, I did ablations, and this thing that I show really, uh, they are not documented. Uh, many health experiments are not documented, and what they show here is the approach that they work. Some of uh, the approach that was mentioned that doesn't work, I also mentioned here. Uh, so regarding the limited uh, data, I can also revise this. Uh, the problem is that uh, we really do not understand the uh, nature of these phenomena, I mean, how activation functions are related to each other, and it really uh, simplifies and makes possible to observe uh, to observe uh, what we're interested in, these fundamental laws. Uh, without the complication of more huge real world data set. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, the work was uh, done, uh, it was made comparable to the previous work like Simon. And uh, actually, I did, uh, did not took the job of evaluating uh, the performance of uh, activation function that work they uh, already done. I mean, uh, the performance of the tenacious loop and other approaches. So uh, the main comparison when they are made is their uh, network that is kind of that uh, gives the best results. Mm -hmm. um, as, uh, now you mentioned uh, that you are creating architecture for neural field modeling. Yes. What neural field? Um, uh, so yeah, the fields, the primary fields, uh, it was tested on the image field. So, but what what, what is this field? Is it the field of RGB values? Yeah, very simple, uh, lightweight setting. And uh, so it's just image. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
But uh, why so is a neural field? Because this field is modeled with a neural network. So any image created by a neural network uh, can be called neural field? Well, it, it corresponds to the definition, and the definition of the field is that uh, this quantity should be defined for all spatial coordinates. Yes, of course, but all an image field is somehow strange. Well, this is the uh, simplest field uh, we can play with, and it turns out that even on this simple task, uh, we fail and do not get what we expect, and we can do better. Um, I'm sorry, could you please return back to the definition? Uh, where did you take it from? Uh, it was taken from this paper down below, neural fields and visual computing and video. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure it's going to be correct, is it? But uh, as far as I understand, you work not only like a rich means, but you have those five coordinates for the field. Uh, yeah, if it is a radiant field, you will have five coordinates uh, three for the spatial and two given angles. And uh, this uh, radiant field uh, was also passed. Uh, but in a limited state, and the uh, most of the experience was done in the, so the images because uh, we can live there with thousands of uh, uh, neural networks. So the video would be a spatial temporal. Uh, I'm sorry, a video, yeah, the spatial, the spatial, spatial temporal. temporal, yeah, and the audio uh, on this uh, temporal. I think well, if it is one, this is not. Um, I would like to ask you to read out the main results and uh, it's related, how it related to the plotting. Because um, the test is uh, rather like, complicated and uh, you like, show the results in not obvious and uh, like straightforward way. And from the summary, you say some other and you can advise, but in the summary, you can read this, uh, it's there, um, like, the first part is, mm -hmm. and the result is the report integration strategy, degrade the report, second passage. Uh, if I remember, I'm just from a second book, and now that was found challenging. Uh, so far, uh, for the this simulation to study the relation to code and what the real results. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the first uh, result is um, relates to this uh, previous work that indeed can be thought of as a subset of the architecture that uh, the proposed architecture has point relations, and two of them are sinusoidal. And the previous work uh, was considered only with one sinusoidal activations, and uh, the achievement there was uh, that uh, to improve the uh, capacity and the speed of convergence of the uh, neural field of the styron neural field, we we are choosing the um, we are deviating from the theoretical derivation of the uh, activate uh, weight insulation method. Uh, and going into more uh, empirical uh, fields. I mean, uh, actually, it was made uh, we are parameterizing and challenging this assumption that uh, the derived method of initialization that is theoretically plausible uh, really is the best one. But what you show that you just uh, merged four different activations, it's the general condition of sleep, then, as far as you yes. so the, the, the core idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are several branches and they are connected together. Yes. So, yeah, and uh, this is actually the. So, I mean, that's why uh, it's not your contribution that the previous work uh, took all this time activation because. Uh, the whole uh, split uh, split ideology is to take two or more. Yeah, uh, so the nature of the four. Otherwise, it, it, 
protocol space. Uh, yeah, so the contribution of the supervisor was to introduce actually this architecture. My contribution was uh, intended, first of all, to uh, test how well it works in the wild and try to improve on that. And uh, uh, there I showed with uh, two approaches that uh, improved the result. And but turned out that uh, doing this, uh, it became possible to improve the performance of the previous work by searching and solution uh, there. Okay. 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 Okay.